Hello there, my name is Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations and thank you for joining my stream. Please let me know if everything is working. It looks like I've got audio, it looks like I've got video, but you never know. There are always technical things and stuff and such. So, uh, it's live now. Good, good, good. Quick hello to everyone. Hello to Jay. Uh, is Jay actually there or did he just say hello at the beginning and then disappear? Um, and hello to Steve, who has, uh, who has just gone to dinner. So I will say hello to you when you come back. Uh, Mystery Margo, Christopher Bourne, uh, uh, who else have we got? Uh, Hot Rod, uh, OA, or, uh, uh, Divisions, Mr. McIntosh, Kyle GP, howdy, howdy, howdy. Hello to everyone. Thank you very much for joining. Um, so, uh, I do apologize to anyone who is a regular watcher, the fact that I didn't do a live stream last weekend, I was not around, I was out of town, so I do apologize, I was nowhere near any of my equipment, so I could not have done a live stream, so sorry about that. Um, now, uh, I'm just trying to think where we're up to, so, uh, last time, I can't even remember what I was working on last time, to be honest, but, uh, Probably an SE30, and that seems to be all that people send me these days. Um, and um, uh, and then, of course, I did release a video, a pre-recorded video recently on a teardown and recap of a Macintosh portable. That was one that I actually recorded a long time ago, um, but I hadn't done the intro to it. Um, and so the other day, I just went, oh, stuff it, I'm just going to get this intro done. And so I just grabbed it. I was going to do some great big lengthy intro talking about the Macintosh portable and the impact it had and all that sort of stuff. And then I just thought, no, nah. if people want to find out about the Macintosh portable, the history and all that sort of stuff, there's plenty of places I can go for that. Let's just turn this into a video about pulling it apart and fixing it. Um, okay, now, uh, as usual, I apologize for these little spots on the screen. Uh, no, my camera isn't dirty. And no, your screen isn't dirty. These little guys, where are we? Uh, there and there and there. Um, they are caused, uh, they were caused when I shined my UV laser at the camera and where I was thinking that that camera would just be fine. It wasn't fine. So, mm -hmm. um, now, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what, what are you working on today? We're working on a Macintosh 2. Uh, it's, I don't normally get, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. I worked on a Macintosh 2 just recently. Um, but um, uh, I have, someone dropped in, a custom, customer dropped in two um, a Macintosh 2s just recently. And so, uh, uh, and they have actually already been recapped by the customer. And at a glance, they actually look like they've been done pretty darn well. So uh, I don't think I'm going to need to recap them, but there is some trace damage. It's my understanding that they, the computers will work when they kickstart them. Uh, that's basically referred to when uh, the Macintosh 2, 2X, 2FX, Macintosh 2 series, ultimately, um, they start by pressing a key on the keyboard. They don't start by a switch on the back. So, uh, that's, so that's like, you know, that soft boot type thing. So, um, that's in order for that to work, there's a thing called the startup circuit and you can bypass that startup circuit. So in other words, just kind of force the computer to switch on even without pressing the power button or pressing the power button on the keyboard. Um, and it's my understanding that he has been able to get these working that way, but he can't get them to work when pressing the power button. And it's a very, very common problem because of where the Mac 2s get damaged. So let's just grab one of the two. Uh, I will be very impartial and just grab this one. Um, big suckers, aren't they? Um, this is why I built my big ultrasonic cleaner because these boards are huge. And thankfully, with my new ultrasonic cleaner, I can clean the, I can get the whole board into the cleaner, which is just awesome. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> right. Okay. So, alrighty. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. So anyhow, this is, um, let me just jump over to the side angle here. It's a little bit dark. I do apologize for that. Uh, here's the board. Um, as you can see, these, uh, these are all the new caps that the customer has put on. They look like nice, tidy solder joints. We'll have a look at them under the microscope. The Macintosh 2, despite the fact that it's a pretty good you know, it's a valuable computer to have. Let's get some light here. Is that going to help? Um, 
it's a pretty valuable computer to have. Um, the um, uh, it's actually a really easy computer to recap in compared to some of the other ones. And the reason for that is, well, first of all, there's so much darn space on the thing. Um, but there is virtually the, this board was designed so that it could take either surface mount capacitors or radial capacitors. So little ones of these little radial caps like this. In actual fact, the earlier revisions of this board did actually have um, these, uh, the, the not radial, sorry, axial capacitors on them. They had the little axial capacitors on them. And so because this is designed to take either, they, they've got a huge amount of space. And I can actually do a little bit of zoom rooney here if I can just find one somewhere around here. There we go. I'm just going to brighten this up. Excuse me, fellas. F fellas? Folks? Sorry. I've got no idea of the gender of people watching, so I don't know why I said fellas. Um, brighten that up a bit. A little bit better. Ah, I can zoom in by remote, but I can't brighten it by remote. So anyhow, here's a cap right there. Right there, and as you can see, it's got these little dots on either side, one dot there and one dot there, and that's where those um, axial leads would go in if you were using axial capacitors. But for that reason, there's a huge amount of space around these capacitors, so they're really it's a really easy recapping job. So not that I'm saying do your first one on a Mac too, because these are very valuable. Do practice on something else, but if you, you know if you are going to be uh, you know doing one on a real board, this is a this is a pretty easy one to do. Um, okay, so, uh, if you handle those, there is any dangerous static trouble. Generally, not that I have found. Um, I have never really had any issues with static here. I mean, I always uh, ground myself when I, uh, when I plant myself down at this, uh, at this bench. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not someone that is completely you know, sort of, uh, uh, you know, relaxed when it comes to, uh, to static, but at the same time, I, um, I'm not as sort of uptight about it as some people are i take i take precautions but uh yeah generally handling like this but when i'm sitting sitting still like this i'm not likely to be uh, generating any static electricity now if i go for a walk around the block on a windy day with some rubber shoes on that might be a different story um okay so garth beagle thank you for your service keeping max alive you're most welcome i enjoy doing it and i enjoy filming it and showing other people in that as well and also obviously a big thanks to folks because i'm heading uh towards uh, 5,000 subscribers. I think I should be there. Oh, probably, probably in two weeks, something like that. I'd say probably two weeks, I'll be up around the 5,000 K mark, or sorry, the 5 K mark. And that is, that's a, that's a big thing for me. Um, I started kind of uh, really focusing on my YouTube channel uh, at the end of, uh, 2019 so a lot of that growth has just been this year so that's uh that's fun um okay all right okay um so anyhow let's let's have a look at this i'm going to jump across to the microscope view we'll just have a look at some of these caps that have uh that have been recapped oh and I, I do actually want to talk about the the damage that this is likely to have had so there's a microscope view oh, it's already in focus how the hell is that that's just like magic wow okay so uh, as you can see, we haven't got a huge amount of um, solder being used. Most of the time when I see people doing their own recaps, the biggest issue I see is huge mounds of solder. And that's usually because the um, the pads haven't been properly prepared or they haven't used enough flux or something like that. And then you just end up with, uh, yeah, mountains of the stuff. Okay, so that's all good. This board definitely needs to clean. There's no doubt about that. But I do need to actually point out the problem, which I didn't do, which is really stupid of me. Um... And that is related to right here. I'm going to zoom in again. Bryce, really enjoy your videos. And nice catching you live this time around. Thank you very much. I, I thank you for watching and thank you for your kind words. I do appreciate it. Um, I've got some interesting stuff on the way, some videos that I'm working on. I'm working on a video on the ultrasonic cleaner behind me and ultrasonic cleaners in general, just talking about what they are, how they work, all that sort of stuff. I'm also working on a video at the moment explaining SCSI for the layman. Um, yeah, so, ah, oh, Madeline, hello, thank you for joining. Um, yeah, so I have had a few questions. Does that look like there's no capacitor on there? It does look like there's no capacitor on there, doesn't it? Right there. 
I think there's meant to be a capacitor right there, and there's no capacitor there. But there might be a reason for that. I'll have a look. There might be damage traces or something. That might be why he didn't put one on there. Uh, or maybe it's not meant to have one. Oh, no, there's three missing from here as well. So we'll have to get that sorted. So, okay, this is almost recapped. Maybe he started on it, and then when he saw the damage, he went, no, I, I, can't, I don't want to finish this. Um, so, um, um, like, oh, yes. Um, so the uh, that's how to DIY an ultrasonic cleaner video. It is that as well. It's, it's two things in one. It's one, it is explaining what an ultrasonic cleaner is, how it works, and the other is building your own. Uh, I have found a lot of interesting things out in the process of building this. Uh, one thing I can tell you is it's very important to, you know, in terms of the prep of the surface for sticking the transducers onto the bottom of the tub, because um, I prepped the surfaces in a way that I thought would be great, and it unfortunately wasn't. It wasn't enough stick, and some of the transducers fell off. And I didn't see them fall off, and they ran for a while not attached. And if you run the transducers not attached to the tub for long enough, you fry the power supply. So just letting you know that is you can learn from my uh, from my mistakes. But that's the whole purpose of doing a video like that. Uh, so um, yeah, so this is the you know what do we call it the the owl cooling system. Ooh, see, there's the big owl eyes. And there's the beak, so um, right. So and yes, the uh, the other the other video I'm going to be doing is on on sort of SCSI explained. I get lots and lots of questions. People contacting me and saying, "Oh, I've got a you know an external hard drive, and I don't know if it's terminated or should it be terminated, or I've got two drives or that sort of stuff." And so I, I just thought to myself, having used sort of Max, you know, sort of back in the day. And having lots and lots of peripherals attached to them and SCSI, the understanding of SCSI and the fairly fickle nature of it, um, you know, I, I thought that's something I really would like to be able to pass on to people. So I'm going to uh, going to pass on all the knowledge I can think of relating to SCSI. So there. Uh, successfully recapped the TDK power supply thanks to your guide and about to embark on LC2 motherboard this afternoon. Good one. I've actually got an LC2 motherboard here to recap at the moment, don't I, Madeline? Um, uh, SCSI is still great today. Look at SCSI 2SD stuff. The, the, the thing that, and this is something that I'll be including in the video, is that when you are comparing SCSI to USB or even Firewire, it's very easy to kind of see all the shortcomings of SCSI. But if you go back to like the um, early, or go back to the 90s uh, and look at SCSI from that sort of, that viewpoint, pre-USB and that, uh, SCSI was pretty awesome uh, and fast. And so, you know, we're just all hypercritical now because we've been exposed to something better. But back then, uh, you know, I mean, all, most of the PCs of the day were using, you know, IDE with, you know, the option for two drives in there, master and slave. And then when you attached external devices, you did it by parallel. And that was most of the PCs at the time. And here you got these Macs with SCSI where you can attach seven devices, hard drives, CD-ROM drives, scanners, you know, all, all you know, chained, uh, you know, in a, in a daisy chain. So it was pretty impressive stuff at the time. So, yes. Um, Okay, I'm building a late 90s SCSI tower. CDR plus zip plus jazz plus HDD. That is cool. I like that. SCSI was awesome. Uh, SCSI still is. There you go. Uh, all right. Okay, so. Um, right. Well, this one is definitely not fully recapped, so I am going to have to add some caps to it, but I want to have a look and see if I can figure out why he didn't finish the job. Maybe he ran out of caps or something like that. Um, but then the other thing is we need to do, we need to talk about the damage itself. So this is the board here and right here would have been two batteries, two backup batteries. Uh, well, actually that's not true. One backup battery, one startup circuit battery. One of the batteries is involved to, you know, keep time, keep your settings, your PRAM, parameter RAM. And the other battery was part of the startup circuit. The battery would have sat here. It was a uh, wired in one uh, with sort of axial leads coming out the side. Um, and they are not known for being particularly leaky. 
However, they do cause some damage. So um, what I am going to do is I'm going to inspect this area here and leading along here. This, you can't see it because it's off the camera, this is where all the startup circuit stuff is. So we need to check and make sure that all the traces leading to here are good. Um, there's often with these also damage around, I'm running out of room, God, these boards are big. Um, there's often issues around here and then leading up to these, these little test thingies here. It doesn't matter if any of these traces are broken because we don't need this thing here, but I better zoom out. Ah, hmm. Putting SCSI on your PC was showing that Gucci money. <laughs> uh, okay. Modern implement implementation. iSCSI. Modern implementation. Yes. Um, so I've actually got a SCSI 2SD somewhere. What, did I move it? It's, in here, it's down here somewhere. SCSI 2SD down here somewhere. That's the external one. Here it is. Here's the version, it's a bit grubby, here's the version 5.5, this is one I'd probably use the most, this is a really handy little piece of kit. Um, I've seen quite a few little, there's a, someone actually sent me a link recently to, uh, hello Trina, welcome to the stream. Um, someone actually sent me a, a, a link to a, um, what is it, a, is it a Raspberry Pi SCSI device? So essentially what you do is you get a, you buy this little board, and you attach it to a Raspberry Pi and you turn a Raspberry Pi into a SCSI interpreter. Seems like a terrible waste of a Raspberry Pi, but having said that, Raspberry Pis are darn cheap. Um, so it might actually be a, a more cost-effective option than doing something like this. It may not look as nice though. Um, the ones that I do like the most are the version 5.1 for putting inside computers, just because of the size of them. I like the size and shape and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, you, are, Garth Beagle, you are not the only one. I've shaved this off here, and if you actually have a look at my SCSI to SD uh, review, uh, you'll see that that's something that I point out, because this won't go into a, like a 2CI with the piece of plastic there on the bottom, so I just have to shave the edge off that. I'm, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's a shame that they did that, but you've got to keep in mind that these aren't only made for Macs. They're probably being used on more Macs than anything else, but they're not just being made for Macs. And I look at these in a very Mac-centric way. So, uh, um, all right. Now, um, let's let's have a look at this thing. I'm I'm just blathering on here. Uh, uh, I better I better turn the heater off on my ultrasonic cleaner, otherwise I'll start boiling the thing. Uh, so it's a immersion heater that I have on it um because it's not thermostatically controlled it will be one day but it's not now so yeah all right let's get the old microscope happening here this is one of the pins sticking out that would have been going to the battery we're going to remove that and another pin there that would have been going to a battery and another one there and another one there and then here's where we see the fun stuff uh can you see that glorious green that is trace damage right there. I can tell you with a fair degree of certainty that that is eaten right the way through. And then we've got some more here. Let's get some tweezers so I can point at things. Pointy, pointy, point. Point. Um, okay, so we definitely know we've got a couple there. Then, of course, this is where we also see problems. This is this little trail running along here. We're probably going to need to do some trace repair for this one as well. Um, this area here doesn't look too bad, which is nice. That's encouraging. Sorry, these boards are so freaking big. Mm. Got no room for them. Oh, that's a bit nasty. I had trace damage in exactly the same spot on the last one that I worked on. You can't see that because this board's so big. Excuse me. Let's see if I can move things out of the way and get this further up. There we go. Okay, there we go. There it is. There we, there we see it. So this obviously is meant to go from there to there to there. It's a relatively easy thing for me to just run a little trace repair on those. But yeah, the last one I did had um, had trace damage in exactly the same spot. So really no surprises there. Let's get the old multimeter out and put it in beepity beep beep mode. <clears throat> I'll see if I, if I put it up here. I wonder if you'll be able to hear that better. Can you hear that beepity beep beep? Let me just see. All right, so let's test from here to here. Beep. 
No beep. No beep. So really hardly surprising. Then, of course, these running along here, we can see a bit of trace damage there. But I'm not going to really worry about that because, as I said before, these basically just roll on down to these little, these little test points. I assume there was probably some sort of piece of Apple equipment that they could attach to these here to do some testing on the board. So if anyone is familiar with modern uh, Mac, uh, like MacBook Pros, they have a thing on them called a JTAG. Um, barely hear it. Darn. Darn. I'll just have to tell you. I'll tell you, okay? When it beeps, I'll go beep. Um, Alright, so, look, it's not too bad. I thought it was going to be worse. We've got, you know, I guess we've identified maybe one, possibly, possibly two there. Three, four, five. Uh, might need to do something here. We'll see. Uh, six. And then sort of, yeah, down there. So, yeah, we're, we've got a few. Um, look, I've got to get rid of this axial cap because I actually think this, oh, it's probably come from there, but I'm going to replace this. This is a, an axial um, capacitor that uh, I can't actually see. I can't see the rating on it because some swine put it on the board upside down with all the information upside down. Um, which I find very frustrating. And I, as I've said in my streams before, when I put capacitors on, I always put the information about the capacitor facing outwards to help the next poor sap that comes along. Yeah. Right. Okay. Snip. Snip. Let's have a look at this one. Now, of course, I do have a cheat sheet for this. You'll find a link to it in the description. Here we've got, this is a Nichicon, and it is a 10 microfarad, sorry, 10 microfarad, 16 volt capacitor so um yeah i'll need to replace that i can, as you can see it's set up to, to take either axial or surface mount i will replace this with a surface mount just because we're going to need to take those pins out same with the pins around the battery here these guys here i want to take these pins out the customer hasn't actually said put um put new battery holders on it but i think i probably will because just because right Alrighty then. Yes, a long time ago, 30 years ago, some evil person put that capacitor on uh, in, in, a, in a way that would inconvenience me now. Uh, the fact that this needed a battery to start up and the battery was hardwired to the board tells you about how long they thought these computers would be working for. Now, they were lithium batteries, so they would have expected at least 10 years of, of, you know, reliable uh, battery charge from that, possibly even more. But at the end of the day, a battery is going to run out eventually. And the fact that they hardwired the battery on there that is needed to make the computer start means they really weren't expecting these things to get used now. Uh, where, where are we up to with these? This, they've got to be like 35 years old, something like that, I would think, getting close to that. And they could tell the future. <laughs> All right, okay, so... We're going to start getting these pins out. Uh, I've got a method for removing uh, pins like this, um, and that is to add some flux and get some solder. Let's get some of the old solder roller here. Micro mage repair. Um, have I already said hello to you? If not, hello. And uh, there's a whole bunch of people here that I haven't said hello to, so. Uh, uh, I don't think I said hello to Tom Lindo or Clint. Um, isn't that rude of me? So, you know, I'm so rude. Um, I'm out of practice, that's what it is, because I wasn't, I didn't do this last week. I've forgotten how to live stream. Uh, as usual, um, what I would say to folks is to please feel free to jump on and say hello or ask me any, any questions during the stream. I mean, while I am doing these, oh, sorry, excuse me, I do have to answer this. Uh, um, sorry, I have an opportunity. Um, I have an opportunity to possibly get some, uh, some more vintage Macs. Like I need them. 
it was just an opportunity with someone who lives very, very close to me that has a bunch of, bunch of Macs. And, uh, and we haven't talked price yet, but he seems like a fairly reasonable sort of person. So and at the end of the day, even if I can't afford what he's got, I might um, um, uh, let me just check something. I, I might have to... Uh, Sorry, folks. Do, 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 do. Uh, he's uh, he basically asked. I, I told him last night that I would be around there uh, this afternoon, as in Saturday afternoon. And then he said, "Are you still coming around today?" I said, "Yes, probably around two p.m." He said, earlier if possible. So, um, you maybe didn't read my message that said afternoon. Um, okay, so, and look at me, I'm, make, I'm missing steps and everything. <laughs> I'm not putting flux on things, I'm not concentrating. What a mess, what a terrible mess. There we go. Right, so we've got all those pins out there, and then we've got a couple to remove here as well. Um, I'm probably going to replace the other axials here, unless they've already been replaced. They, they look like the originals, but I will have a look at the pins. All right, there we go. Get some solder on there. Oh, this one, this one's attached to a ground, because it's not moving. When they're really hard to shift, it's generally because they're attached to ground, and ground is usually a large plane of copper on the other side of the board, or inside the board, and it sucks away all of the heat from the soldering iron. It makes it really hard to melt. And it, it frustrates me. There we go. And it means it's going to be hard to get the solder out of there as well. That's something to look forward to. Sorry, folks. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Right. Okay, so let's have a look at these other actual caps and see if these are the originals or whether they've got new ones plonked on. The, the only, they look like the originals, it's just the pins look a little bit wonky and usually the originals, the pins actually look quite nice. Uh, okay, so yeah, basically this is someone who just lives near to me, uh, a couple of suburbs away, maybe 10, 15 minute drive. He just posted a, an image. Yeah, this is the original. These are the originals. Yep. He um, posted a, um, uh, a, a thing on Facebook saying, hey, I've got all these, and I really, I'm not particularly interested in all of them, but there is uh, a couple of iBooks and I think a G4 tower. Wouldn't mind a G4 tower and maybe an iBook. Um, but at the very least, if uh, if he's trying to offload them all, I'm going to see if I can maybe um, help him. Um, I have done that before as well. Connect him up with some other enthusiasts that might be interested. Uh, all right, so. Horst, hello. Welcome to the stream. Do you prefer leaded or lead-free solder for your work? Personally, I'm using uh, silver bearing lead solder. I absolutely 100% use leaded solder. I cannot stand using lead-free solder. Uh, I don't, I f just find leaded solder so much easier to work with. Now, yes, I do understand all of the risks associated with it. I use a Kester brand. There are links in the description. I use a Kester brand. Was it 6337? 63% lead, 37 tin? No, or the other way around. 63, I can't remember. It's here. It's written on the side here somewhere. 60... 63 lead, 37 tin. Um, no, 63 tin, 37 lead. Nothing wrong with me. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I, I, um, the Kester is a good brand. I mean, generally with solders, you do get what you pay for. But having said that, I mean, even relatively, you know, low-cost ones are quite good. But, yeah, it's definitely leaded solder. I prefer working with it. Um, I don't... I can't stand lead-free solder, to be honest, if I'm to be completely honest, which I usually am. Um, so, uh, I should actually mention Horst, 
who is in the chat there, just asking about the uh, solder, is the person I have to thank for my Macintosh SE30. Because many, many moons ago, some years ago, I did a little trade with Horst, and I gave him a whole stack of my bits and pieces from, I think they were from um, clone uh, computers, from like uh, uh, power computing clones. There's a whole bunch of CPU daughter cards and a whole bunch of RAM and a whole bunch of PCI cards and stuff like that. And uh, I went around to Horst's, Horst's place, and I uh, he basically, I just brought a box of bits, and he just... Uh, picked through it and grabbed the stuff that he wanted and I walked away with an SE30 and I felt that that was a very very good trade I uh, I was happy I, I had lots of surplus power PC bits um, so that worked out quite well so uh, there you go there's a little bit of history um, uh, I originally it basically I got in contact with Horst when I think it's giving some software away or selling it very cheaply, anyway, one of the two. I think it might have been Speed Doubler, um, the software Speed Doubler. I had a couple of copies of that sealed in the plastic. And uh, Horst came and grabbed that, and we, uh, we then got to talking about Max in general. So, anyhow, there you go. There's a little bit of history for you. Um, so, where are we going? What possible models does he have? Now, he's got some Bubble G3s. Sorry, this, I'm going back to talking about the guy uh, who is who I'm, I'm visiting uh, a little later today. Um, he is he has a couple of Bubble Bubble Max, you know, G3 iMax. Uh, I think there might have been three of them. He has an eMac, uh, and he had a G4 tower, and, yeah, I think it was three iBooks, something like that. Uh, I'm just going to have a look at them. Of course, those iBooks, the stinky ones. <laughs> Everyone else aware of the smell of those iBooks? Um, the plastic deteriorates on them and they get stinky. Um, really stinky. So, something to look forward to. This one's, I think, attached to a ground. I'm going to hit this with some flirts. <sighs> Uh, had an actual cap that was challenging on SE30 just a couple of days ago. Yeah, um, yeah, that it 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 uh, it does get like that. Come on. Now, where have all my Macyak friends gone? Look at this. I mean, no Jay, no Steve, no Dana. Goodness me. Must be a, a busy Friday night. I know that uh, Greg Ritke from Ritke Mods was visiting Jay today. This one's a real bugger, this one. I might attack this from the other side. I'll just see if I can leave it long enough to get hot. <laughs> Justin Morgan, hello. Welcome to the stream. There we go. I finally got it out. You good luck, Justin. Just as you arrived, that pin came out. <clears throat> Dana could be busy doing things. No, it's not things, Trina. It's stuff. <laughs> now, let's not get those two things confused. One is things and one is stuff. And Dana does stuff. He did actually do a stream. I don't know if you saw that one, Trina. I can't remember if you were present, but he uh, he did actually finally do a live stream the sound was all out of sync but we could not deny that he did finally do a live stream you missed it ah yes fair enough um that stream was a good time yeah he basically just went through things because he's a He's been doing a lot of tidying and stuff like that. And he just went through all his old bits. Now, here's my little prediction for you. I reckon this one, I'm going to get the solder out of this one really easily. That's just my prediction. And the, but the other one's going to be really difficult. So, there you go. Whee! Out she comes. And there's a nice big hole. Hooray! And this one's going to be the difficult one. And this is when I'll probably have to get my big soldering on. Out, damn solder. Out. 
get out. Ground plane again. Max Button, hello, welcome to the stream. Did you ever get that, uh, what was it, 8500 working, Max? I'm just curious. I would be very disappointed if I gave you a lemon. Virtually everything else I got from that place worked, so. Um, John Roberts, quick hello, but can't stay. Well, thank you for saying hello. And don't forget to smash that like button. Hey, what's up, guys? Okay, so... These don't look too bad. I might just clean these up a little bit. Uh, as I say, these are um, these weren't. Uh, you know, I didn't remove the caps. I was trying to think a word for removing caps, but I don't think I have one. Decapperized. These weren't done by me, so I don't mind just doing a little bit of cleaning before I plonk new ones on there. This, this board will definitely benefit from a bit of time in the ultrasonic cleaner. No doubt about that. I have another look at it right now as I watch a stream. Excellent. De decapitate. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, right. So, uh, where was I? I was somewhere around here having a look. Uh, there's a couple of things I want to have a look at here. I want to see if this has had the ROM upgrade. No, it hasn't. Apple 82, I don't think it has anyway. So for those who don't know, the original Mac 2, when it came out, it, it had the ability to um, connect up two floppy drives, um, but there were only 800K floppy drives that you could connect up to. And um, obviously then the, the high density drives were being used left, right and center, but the ROMs on these would not allow you to, excuse me, you could connect a, a high density drive, but it would still only read 800K disks. Um, and in order to get this to read high density disks, you could do a ROM upgrade, which my original Mac 2 had. This, my original Mac 2 is long gone, unfortunately. Um, so I, um, and you replaced, I think it was two, you, yeah, two ROMs, two ROM chips, and then uh, this little IWM chip here, the integrated WAS machine. Um, the, that, that, so it was these, these, I think it was th just three chips that had to be replaced. And then you would be able to read high density disk, and it also made uh, made it so you could put up to 128 megabytes of RAM in it. So um, yeah, uh, I would really love that ROM upgrade, and I, actually, I'd really love my old Mac back, but it is not to be. Alas, it is not to. The white balance looks totally out on my camera today. That's this 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 is meant to be yellow. What's going on? You reckon I can fix it up again? I'm going to just try. I'm going to try and fix up the white balance. So. Here's some white. Yeah, look at that. It's, look how blue it is. Camera's going off. You ready? Uh, and back on again. Sorry, Bruce. I'm a little late today. No problem. I can live with that. I'll survive. That looks better. See how blue that was before? Now it's... Oh, it's good. oh look. <laughs> it's on auto white balance. I don't know why the settings have changed, but they have. I'm, I'm not happy. I'm going to have to fix that up. So basically, uh, there are two ways I can have this camera set up. The first is to have it so that it uh, does the white balance once when I switch it on. The other is that it auto white balances the whole time. And I really don't like the auto white balance the whole time because you end up with it making things like tables blue. <sighs> is the Mac 2 better than the Mac 2 CI? Ultimately, no. But there are a few things you have to keep in mind. First of all, the Mac 2 is a much bigger box. So if you're wanting to load it up with hard drives and stuff like that, you can. You know, there was enough space on these to put, you could stick a five and a quarter inch hard drive on the top, you know, full height five and a quarter inch hard drive on the top and two floppy drives as well. So, I mean, you, you could you could theoretically stick like three hard drives in there and if you had the right cable for it and some power supply for them. But so there was a lot of space. That was number one. Number two, the Mac 2 had one, two, three, four, five, six new bus slots. Whereas the 2CI, I've got one floating around here somewhere. Is that a 2CI? It's a 2FX. I mean a 700. That, that is a, what is that? I think, oh, that's a 2V, 2V off? That's definitely not a 2CI. I don't know what it is, but anyhow. The, uh, I think Steve here, he can just tell me this stuff straight off the top of his head. 
The 2CI had fewer new bus slots on it, uh, but of course the 2CI was faster. At the time the 2CI came out, a few years later, a few years after the Macintosh 2, it came out with um, a way faster processor. This has a 68020 CPU running at 16 megahertz. The 2CI had a 68030 CPU running at, I think, 25 megahertz from memory. So significantly faster computer. So the 2CI is better in that it's faster, but it doesn't have as much expandability as this thing because this thing has, um, you know, so many slots. You know, you can do wild and crazy stuff with this. So, yeah. Ah, okay. All right. Uh, right. Okay. So now. So, but the, the, the thing is that the Mac 2 has become very collectible because the Mac 2 was the very first modular Macintosh, i.e. the very first Macintosh that came out that wasn't a compact Mac. So that obviously brought out the, you know, the, the, Mac, the original Macintosh, the 512K, the 512KE, the Plus, the SE. Was the S? No. Yeah, the SE30 came after the Mac 2. And then, yeah, then... It was the SE and the 2 came around out around the same time? Something like that, I can't remember. But anyhow, so the Mac 2 was the first modular Mac, and it was, most importantly, it was the first Mac that could display color. Um, I mean, you could put color expansion into, I think, some of the early ones, uh, some of the early compact Macs, but really, realistically, this was the first color Macintosh. So it, the Mac 2 was a pretty big deal in terms of Apple's history, and so that's one of the reasons why these have become so collectible. All right, now... The whole time I'm yammering here, I'm not getting any work done. Right, okay. Right, let's get some... Uh, just checking that person hasn't replied to me, so I assume he's just happy for me to turn up as early as possible. I've got no idea where it is. I should ask him for the year, shouldn't I? Uh, what's the address? There we go. There we go. <laughs> Sucking out some solder. Didn't get it all. It didn't get it all. Sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're hard. And I think it's time for me to change over to my great big chunky soldering iron. So this is what I do when I'm trying to deal with getting solder out of these holes. Um, oh, hello. Uh, could you give me a suggestion to my question? Uh, sorry, well, let me have a look. Where's your question? Okay, I have a question for you, Bruce. How do you desolder LGA51 package chips? The pins of the chip are 80% under the package itself and 20% to the side. Now, you would be talking about something like... I could be wrong, but are you talking about something along these lines? Uh, where are we? Something like something like this little guy here, where it's actually on the on the bottom. Um, the, what are these called? Q uh, QFM packages. Oh, look at a little critter. Hello, critter. Run, run, run. I don't know what it is, but. He doesn't look good, does he? He looks like some sort of nasty thing. But anyhow, um, so uh, let me just, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a little googly uh, on the, uh, this, okay. It's very close, uh, it's tiny. I'm trying to uh, hack a router and need to desolder the chip. Okay, so really the only way you're gonna get these sorts of things off, uh, let me just move this for a sec. And we'll just, we'll just do a quick little, little sidetrack here won't take long really the only way you're ever going to get these off is by using a hot air station and i would not recommend you attempt to do these any other way hot air stations are pretty cheap just buy one on amazon there's a link in the description for where you can get a hot air station um yeah you i you don't I, I would say don't attempt to remove a chip like this without it basically what you do is i mean it's a good idea to get a little bit of flux on here I go over yes, and then we're just going to hit that with some hot air.
I can pretty much promise you that without a hot air station, you will damage the board or the chip or both. You basically just provide enough heat, this will eventually get hot. These boards, by the way, these are uh, these modern Mac boards, they absorb a lot of heat, so it does take a while sometimes, but we'll see these eventually go soft. And then off it comes. And as you can see, underneath there is a great big area of, um, there's a great big area, oh, oh, yeah, great big area of, solder there there's like a huge pad underneath it so obviously there's no way you can get to that with just a soldering iron tip it's as simple as that you just can't do it so it it absolutely must be done with a hot air station that's the right tool for the job so um as i say there i use one that's a few hundred dollars but ultimately you can pick up a hot air station for like 50 bucks hello michael welcome to the stream um so you know uh you I just, you know, don't don't rush into it. Uh, get your hot air station, and uh, um, and and do it that way. Um, it has no metal under it, just the pins. Okay, cool. But either way, uh, regardless of whether it has a metal under it or not, um, my advice remains the same. Do not attempt to do it with just a soldering iron. Get yourself a hot air station. Um, it's it's just it's it's essential. Um, they're not, they're not expensive enough to be, you know, not using, you know what I mean? It's it, like, if we were talking about something, it's like, oh, this is a thousand dollars or something. We'd be like, oh yeah, you've got to try and find a way to do it. They're not a thousand dollars. You know, you can get, you can get a half decent one for like 50 bucks. So, you know, definitely do it. Uh, I'm going to put this chip back on just because I'm here. Uh, so I was going to get me some, uh, this is a humongous, um, tip for, for a job like this. I'm just going to get some leaded solder onto these pins. As you can see, working on a uh, modern Mac is a very, very different story to working on a vintage one. Oh, that's way too much. Oh, let's try not to destroy this thing. There we go. Get solder on all those little pads there. And then. And then we're going to. Uh, this is going to be a lot easier now that I've got. Uh, that, this was lead free solder on it before. I've now replaced it with leaded solder. It's going to clean this all up, get it looking reasonably nice. So it's isopropyl alcohol with a Q tip or a cotton bud that I'm using there. Um, and then I am going to put some flux on here. This is my cheap flux. I should be using my expensive stuff, but I'm running so low on the expensive stuff and my delivery got lost in Hong Kong somewhere. So they've sent me some more, but who knows when it's going to be arriving. So we get the, uh, chip here, uh, and we have to hope that I know where I didn't even pay attention to which way around this chip was, but it doesn't really matter because this is just a donor board. This will never work. So. It would only ever be if I needed to take this off again. So, have this floating in some flux here. Hit this with some hot air. I might actually just drop the um, the amount of um, blowing down. Airflow. That'll do. That's a good word. Do, do, do. Anyone who's looking at this will be getting, geez, this is a funny looking Mac too. If anyone just turns up now, what the hell is that? This is not a Mac 2 I'm working on at the moment. This flux isn't as good for this sort of work. Look at that little bit there. I don't know what that is. Right, I'm going to just crank up the air again now. There we go. You see how the chip just found its own way there using the surface tension of the solder? Now it knows where it wants to be. I'm just going to apply some pressure at the top and then heat it. And it's going to squeeze all the excess solder out the sides. Get this sitting nice and flush on the board. Oh, 
wait for that solder to dry, and then just clean up the excess with my uh, with my iron, with my way way too big for this work iron. Yay! There we go. So, um, that was, I'm sure, for uh, vintage Mac people, one of the most boring things I've ever done on the sh on the channel before. But uh, yeah, it was it was a demonstration. That's the removal and reapplication of what do they call these? The Q QF QFN packages or something like that. Q I can't remember. So there we go. Whoopsie. Pretty. It's nice, doesn't it? So there we go. Um, all right. So, um, all right. Uh, what temperature do you usually solder this one right there? Uh, I have the soldering station, hot air station, on four hundred and thirty-five degrees Celsius, and I have it blowing the highest amount of air, air that it can blow out. Uh, particular on those boards, as I mentioned before, they do suck a lot of heat away. So uh, you need to really crank up the heat on those. Okay, back to what we were doing before, which was me blathering on and not getting any work done. Um, so, I am going to have to change pins on, uh, change tips on my soldering iron to my great big fat one. Uh, and that is because I am trying to suck solder out of, um, out of holes in the board. And for that, we need a lot of heat in the right place. So... Uh, it's not damaged by so much hot air. No, they're actually designed for that. Those chips are actually designed for application and removal and stuff like that with that amount of heat. So, yeah, absolutely not damaged by that amount of heat. Um, so, Vintage and new computers. Good on you, Trina. That's what we like to hear. Um, I've actually got a modern computer here at the moment. Uh, a Mac... Uh, MacBook Pro, when I say modern, it's not brand spanking new. It's a MacBook Pro 2014 or something like that. 2013, I don't know. Don't know exactly. I'm going to have to, uh, I've got a bit of work to do on that. I probably won't live stream that, only because I'm not quite as um, adept with the modern ones as I am with the oldies. I don't want to make a fool of myself. Uh, someone like Jay from House of Moth is very good with the uh, the new ones. That's his job. So I need to add some solder to this hole. Um, people who watch my streams will know I say this all the time. It seems counterintuitive to add solder to somewhere you want to remove it from. But uh, adding new, fresh, leaded, leaded solder does make it easier to get that solder out in the long run. Uh, solder likes to hang out with other solders, so when you get... Nice big batch of solder in there. Um, yeah, I might have to come at some of these from the other side. You see all this? This is all of this copper. This is all ground, you know, um, and it's just sucking heat away. This one will probably be a little bit easier, but we'll see. Come on, you want to come out? You so want to come out? He does. I can tell. He's just got that look about him. We haven't even started on the trace repair yet. My goodness. Yeah, I'm going to come at all of these from the other side because I'm just not having any luck from this side, am I? Ah, that one looked good. Oh, I got most of that out of that one. Hey, that one. You can just see it. Oh, you didn't see it because you <laughs> I wasn't pointing at the right place. Um, I don't think I was anyway. Um, oh, look at that one. That one's nearly empty too. Yeah, come on. When you finally get the hole clear, you often see it because you just see the, the oh, look at that, tearing a pad. You see the, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, the uh, wick, solder wick, just suddenly go shiny, and that's just as it's absorbed all of that uh, solder in a rush. So I'm going to flip him over. Actually, I might just uh, try these holes here from the other one. These boards are so big, they're annoying, how frustrating. Just 
just going to trim some of this uh, wick. I go through a lot of wick, by the way. I buy wick all the time. Virtually every time I go to my local electronics retailer, I buy a spool of wick while I'm there. While well, I'm here, may as well wick. There we go. That one's hot, nice and clear. Oh, flippy over time. Um, so let's do this one to start off with. Have to refocus here. Let me just check on the uh, uh, also loves the thermal requirements. Uh, non leaded takes a lot of heat. Yes, that's right. Um, I that's one of the main reasons why I don't like using lead uh, uh, lead free solder because uh, of the fact that it uh, it requires more heat to uh, to melt. Don't like it. Ah, uh, pulled out some RAM. We now have video. Yippee! Okay, so just uh, to fill people in on that, um, I recently picked up, I have talked about this on my streams before, I recently picked up a bunch of uh, Macs for quite cheap, and they turned out to be a really good find. Uh, they, they were photographed looking like they'd all been sitting in a shed and were in terrible condition, and to be honest, a lot of them were. The cases were very messy. But the majority of these computers all worked. Um, everyone I tested has worked. Anyhow, I ended up with, in that batch of cute computers, I ended up with two um, uh, 8500s, uh, Power Macintosh 8500s. I think it was an 8500. Um, and I really didn't need to. And uh, Max was the person who actually tipped me off on these computers in the first place. He said, hey, is this anywhere near you? And I'm like, yes. And so I thought I thought I would give him an 8500 as a finder's fee. So, and I am very pleased to hear that it is working. It obviously has some RAM issues, but as did all of those Power Macintoshes at the time. And sometimes you just move the RAM around and it'll work. Um, okay, that's, that's out, that's out. Uh, where's the others? Come on. What's that one? Oh, they're over here. They're over on this side. Sorry, folks. It's not concentrating. I'm not concentrating much today, am I? I'm a mess. I'm a mess. Maybe not enough sleep last night. That looked like it came out. Yep. Here we go. This is the last hole. Don't let me down. There we go. We are clear. We are in the clear. Jay, welcome to the live stream. I was beginning to think all of my Mac, uh, my uh, sorry, my Mac Yak friends had forsaken me. Um, so thank you very much for joining. We are looking at a Macintosh 2 here today. I accidentally have my uh, my camera on automatic white balance, so it keeps changing the white balance every time I uh, move around or something. Which is something I will rectify, but I can't rectify while it's connected to the computer. So, <sighs> um, now let me just. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, so we... Is there a reason that wick is preferable to a solder sucker for you? I've never gotten wick to work consistently. Guessing that's due to poor quality wick. Um, it's a really good question, Horst, and I um, I do actually have three different methods of solder removal. I've got my uh, little, my machine that goes, uh, 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 I can't show it here. Let me change camera view, three. There's this little guy here that goes, uh, 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 uh. Um, it's the um machine. Uh, and I also have one of these things here, which has been referred to by Jay from House of Moth as the Brucinator. One of these solder suckery things here. And I find that every single one of these tools has a use for a particular type of removal. Um, I generally use the mechanical solder sucker for using, for removing things like, um, I've got some here somewhere, moving things like RAM slots, like these when you've got loads and loads of pins or if you have to remove a CPU or something like that. You know, if you've got a through hole uh, IC, I generally use the machine for things like this. Um, if I've just got one off, you know, maybe if I'm removing, say, a, uh, uh, a through-hole radial capacitor, I will generally use uh, 
use um, this guy, this guy here. But when it comes to cleaning the solder out of the holes, there's one thing removing it and everything, but when it comes to cleaning the solder out of the holes, I find that wick works the best. Um, as I say, there are times when I will use a solder sucker, but for this particular job, I found the wick works, works best. I recommend buying the good wick, this stuff here, and use it with a little bit of good flux as well. I buy this stuff from uh, JCar. They just stock it there um, as just one of their standard items. So if you you know rock up to a, a JCar, you'll find they have this in 1.5 mil, 2 mil, and 3 mil varieties. I like using the 2 mil. Um, and uh, yeah, so so that's that. I yeah, as I say, I, different different you know tools for different tasks. And of course, you need you need wick does take some some practice with, uh, even with a good quality wick, you know, just sort of don't don't fiddle around with it on stuff that you like because it's just so easy to, you know, have it when you're starting off with it, you know, or when you're playing around with it early early on. You, if you get the wick stuck on a pad and then you pull the wick and then next thing you know the pad's gone. So, yeah. So as we always say, uh, you know, muck around on an old VC, VCR or a PC. Muck around on the PC. Um, okay, uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Um, <laughs> yes, that's another thing. Uh, Leo Schneider, uh, a bevel tip makes a difference to using wick. That is very, very true. I, um, a lot of sol uh, soldering irons come with a conical tip or a pointed one. And this one here, I'm using a bevel tip. Now, this is admittedly a very big bevel tip. But this is kind of showing you the advantage of a bevel tip. You have this large, flat surface on the soldering on the soldering iron that you can push down onto the wick uh, and make sure that you're getting really good heat transfer from the soldering iron onto that wick and onto the board. And that you know, heat is really a, a, an important part. So that would be my suggestion. Now I can get rid of my my gigantically huge tip now. Um, so is this also called a 3C tip? So this one here, is, the one that I use typically, the main tip that I use is a T12BC2. I do have links to that in the description, I'm pretty sure. Uh, the great big one is a T12C4. Now, if you ever happen to be on Hacko's website, there is a dizzying quantity of tips available to buy. Um, what I would generally suggest if anyone does have a soldering station like this, jump onto eBay. You can actually buy copy tips, non-genuine, non-genuine Hacko tips. Yeah, you know, like I said, T12 tips not made by Hacko. And you can buy them in kits of like 10 or 15 or you can get a whole bunch. And it's what I did. I bought a big selection and I got with that conical tips. I got, um, you know, sort of uh, what are, you know, wedge tips and, all, and I just got every different type of tip. And then I tried lots of different tips and found the ones that I like to use. Once I found the ones that I like to use, then I bought those in the Hacker because they are a better quality tip. So once I realized how much I enjoy using this BC2, I think that's what I said it was, didn't I? This BC2, I then bought the tip uh, as a Hacker tip. Um, so, and I just keep the other one as a spare for when I break it, which I did do on a live stream once. Uh, right in the middle of a recapping, uh, the end snapped off. So, didn't it make me look a fool? Um, so, we are continuing with this now. A um, couple of things that I want to do here in preparation for the work that we're going to be doing. I need to clean up some of these, uh, these damaged traces. So, we're going to start over here. I want to have a look at this because a capacitor is going to have to go down here at some stage. And I just want to check and make sure that this trace coming out of the right hand side is good because it was a little bit green that looks okay so we're fine so everybody is happy wow probably most people I'm not sure i could go and say everyone is well there's someone out there's not happy is anyone here updated to uh ios 14 or uh, uh, uh the watch what is it watch OS 7 for anyone who has a Apple Watch. Is anyone out there updated to Apple Watch 7? Just curious. Curious.
Um, okay, uh, where are we? What is that round thing with six holes, three wires going through it? Sorry, yes, I didn't see that and I've moved from it. Uh, but I can see that uh, Horst has uh, answered that. It is a choke. It is a choke. And that's no choke. <laughs> I'm only choking. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Jeez, I make me laugh. Uh, so this is the area we had before, as you can see, with this terrible trace damage. If I zoom right in here, you can see what I'm talking about. This is just completely and totally rotted through, um, which is no good at all. Uh, so I am going to do some repairage there. Now there's, there is still copper there, so I'm just going to tin that, clean it up a little bit, but I don't think that is actually broken. So that's nice. Very nice. Um... Just looking around, looking around, look up, look up, look down. Okay, I've got to clean some of this off. Uh, this is obviously really, really nasty looking. Uh, I wonder if this is the good one or the bad one. He sent me two boards. We both have trace damage. I'm just not sure if what I'm looking at here is a good one or the bad one. Action Retro, Sean is here. Hello, welcome to the live stream. Busting out the dad chokes. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll update some stuff to the 5.x kernel of... Yeah, I, sorry, the main reason why I mentioned that, what I was saying before about updating to... Uh, uh, iOS and watch OS and whatever. I updated the watch OS yesterday and since then my watch has simultaneously restarted on its own on two separate occasions. Just restarted all by itself. I look down and I see the Apple logo and it could have done it more times than that because I'm not always looking at my watch. I was wondering if anyone else has had a similar experience. God, look at the damage. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Um, this is, of course, damage here as well, and damage here. Oh, we're loving it. And what I'm wanting to do here is I'm wanting to expose the copper. And, of course, when I do the scraping, if I don't see copper, I know there's a very good chance that, that trace is deaded. I don't like it being so close to here, but I'm not going to remove that, uh, that ROM chip. God, that was a nasty one, isn't it? Look at the way it's built up there. Pretty much every Mac 2 I've ever looked at looks the same. They get exactly the same traces damaged. Going a long way there. So I'm going to have to do this one all the way from back here. Back here. This thing is going to need a gallon of UV solder mask. <laughs> Sorry. Um, that's wrong. A litre. Uh, where does the green stuff on the traces come from? That is corroded copper. When copper gets corroded, it goes green. So, yeah. That's, it is, what you're seeing there is the remnant of the copper. So, uh, I'm going to tin these, um, these traces that I have exposed. So I'm going to do that by getting a wee bit of, put some, uh, some flux down there, getting a little bit of solder on the end of my uh, iron. I'll give them a bit of a rub around here. As you can see, I'm getting solder onto those exposed bits of copper, which will stop them from um, corroding in the future. Um, yeah. And again, another thing this also does is show me which ones need repair. Because the ones with all the gaps in it, are going to be the ones that I need to run trace repair. So 
like that humongous big gap right there. Um, okay, now, and obviously here as well. David Stahl, hello, thank you for joining. Um, where's the Bruce Wayne mask? That's a good question. It's around here somewhere. Actually, or is it up in the house? I'm not sure. I'm Batman. Do, 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 do. Yes, it is. Uh, it's an interesting thing. I do I often have people saying to me things like, did you know your name's a lot like Bruce Wayne? It's like, um, yeah, uh, yeah, I did. I did know that. Yes, thank you. It's only one letter of difference. How about that? Someone once said to me, you should change your name to Bruce Wayne. And I thought, how could I possibly benefit from that? <clears throat> oh, just dropped a spool of wick. Uh, oh, look, I'm a bit behind here. No issues with watch OS here. Hmm. That's not what I wanted to hear. Hmm. Um... Help me to reach 1,000k, 1k subscribers challenge. That's an interesting name. <clears throat> Hello from India. Hello there. Um, okay. Uh, do, 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 look, I read these things in the worst order, don't I? Uh, that's exposed copper, isn't it? Covered in mask. Well, yes, it is covered in mask, but what has happened is something has landed on top of the mask, namely a little bit of either um, electrolyte from the capacitor or um, sort of alkaline, it's usually electrolyte as well, from a battery, and it's landed on there and it has eaten through the trace, sorry, the mask, and then got onto the copper and caused the copper to then corrode from the underneath and push up so that's what happens this is why these uh this is why these capacitors need to be replaced and of course why i generally say to people get these things done sooner rather than later because you will save yourself some dollars by getting me to replace these things before they've leaked all their scunge onto the uh onto the board because i won't have to go through and do all of these costly repairs just saying. What time is it? 12.14. So I'm going to have to probably finish this by about one, unfortunately, so that I can go and look at those uh, Maccas. Uh, so it is currently 12.14 here in Oz. So that gives me around about 45 minutes to see if I can finish this up. So I've got to try and uh, move with some purpose here. Um, having said that, I'm a little bit concerned that this person hasn't come back to me since my last message. Is he, is he unhappy? I do have his mobile number, so I can always try that. Ten fourteen here. Where's my phone? Put it over here. Oh, here we go. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, no, he's fine. Yeah, exposing a little bit of copper there. I'm going to run this trace repair through this hole and out the other side. It will make it a better repair, and we like better repairs. This is still the bit that I've, I've been avoiding. I feel like I might need a new scalpel blade. Fish are friends, not food. Is that so? 
I have to admit, I'm not a big fish eater. Uh, I do eat just about everything else, though. I eat lots of chicken, which is kind of funny seeing as I have chickens. I don't eat them. I'm having Indian for dinner tonight. Yummy. Yummy. How oh, is the tip of this looking? Actually, it's not looking too bad at all, so I think I can keep using the scalpel. False alarm. Not sure if this is actually broken. This is very dull, I do appreciate. I apologise to everyone watching who's just going, Wow, let's call this the Scrape Channel. Uh, how do we go along here? They're, they're, they're all right on there. Okay, so, yeah, all right. Okay. Runs in the band. Okay. Oh, thank you, Jay, for that little plug. Good old Jay there, just uh, making sure that uh, he spreads the word about my uh, recapping website, Recapper Mac. Um, lots of guides. Going to be more guides added. I've got a few coming. I've got an LC3 guide will be up there soon. At the moment, I think I've only got a one and a two. Um, what else? SE30 power supply is coming soon. Uh, uh, some of them get slowed down when, because nowadays I'm actually putting information about what caps to buy. And um, uh, in order for me to properly recommend, you know, caps, I've got to go in and measure them all. And that takes time. Uh, more importantly, it takes me having one here to do. And I haven't done one in ages. Using wick here for tinning and cleaning. Are we winning with tinning? Okay, save the max. Yes, indeed. It is an absolutely magnificent day here at the moment. It is like Goldilocks conditions. It is currently 29 degrees in the Celsius. Uh, We're heading towards the time of year where uh, my shed, well, my, I should say my fancy studio here, uh, gets a little bit hot. And under those circumstances, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about live streams this year. I wasn't live streaming during summer last year. If I was, I wasn't doing much. I didn't start live streaming until later. Uh, encouraged by my Mac-Yak, Mac Yak friends, I should mention, of course, the old Mac Yak. Uh, it is a weekly show, happens every Thursday evening uh, in, uh, that's uh, American uh, Eastern time. Uh, here in Australian time, it happens in the morning of Friday. Um, and uh, basically, I join a group of like-minded individuals and we talk about everything Macintosh. Um, and we've basically got um, you know, the House of Moth, Jay is a member, uh, Mac84, welcome back, I hope you enjoyed your dinner. That's Steve, he's there, and then we've also got Greg Rutke from Rutke Mods who used to turn up. Um, we've got um, Mike from Mike's Mac Shack that occasionally turns up. We've got uh, Greg Thompson or GT, um, he, uh, he also turns up, what's his channel called? I can't remember. Um, and, uh, who am I missing? Dana from Dana Does Stuff, who's not here today. And well, I'll tell you what, it's going to be strife. He better have a good reason for not being here. Um, okay. Um, uh, just looking around. I think we can probably start actually doing some repairs now. Um, have I missed anyone in the uh, Mac group? I've... Oh, Rocky, of course. I forgot about Rocky. 
um, who again is not as as regular uh, as some of the other guys, but he is uh, he is, does turn up there from time to time, and he's Evil Mod Pixie. If you're looking for his channel and stuff, Dana showed up on my stream. Yeah, I know. What the hell, man? What the? He's gonna. I tell you what. I am so offended. Um, and anyhow, we get together once a week and we just chat about all things Mac and it's done in a very light hearted way, just, you know, meant to be fun. We are not, we are Mac users and we are people who like using Macs and we like the OS, but we are not necessarily Apple lovers. Um, we get on there and if we think Apple's doing something stupid, we're the first to say it. Um, in came Morpheus, Hello. So uh, if you haven't watched the old Mac Yak show, I would recommend having a look, um, you know, so maybe look at some of our older shows or uh, jump onto uh, one of the, uh, jump onto the next one and check it out. As I say, it's a nice bit of fun, nice bit of fun. And we basically all enjoy making each other laugh. And I think that helps to make, uh, make it a, a pretty fun show. Oopsie. 38 viewers at the moment. Hello, a bit of a slow start today, but it's definitely building up now. So thank you to everyone who is watching at the moment. Remember, if you uh, are new to the stream, uh, please feel free to jump on and say hello. Um, if I, if you ask me a question, I will always endeavour to answer it. Sometimes I do miss the things in the chat, and so feel free to ask again. Um, either do the little at sign, Frankus Creations, so that it highlights on the screen for me to be able to see it. Um, or of course there's, um, I will always respond to a super chat. So, uh, it is not a requirement to do a super chat for this channel. Um, but as I say, if you, uh, if you do want to get my attention, you will definitely get it with a super chat. Um, and I should actually thank, there's a, there's a couple of people that have just jumped on to my, uh, little PayPal donation thing and have, um, donated some money to me which is very nice of them so thank you to those people those viewers they sometimes just send me money sometimes they say a few kind words like really enjoy your channel or something like that and i really appreciate that it's very nice of folks so thank you thank you right let's start repairing some terraces we've definitely got a damaged one here um this one hoya this one here i think above it is okay but we will check with the beepity beep beep machine um, we all hate the D2 chip. Yes, we do indeed. Um, okay. We have 924 subscribers on Mac Yak. Whoa, we are, we are growing. Beep. So apparently it's hard to hear the beep. So that's me doing it. Beep, beep, beep. Okay. No beep. Beep. Beep, 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 beep. I do want to clean that little hole up though, get a little bit of solder onto it. Some forks. If anyone ever watches this and uh, again hasn't watched many of my streams or my videos and is wondering what is the story with the flux, why do I use so much, what does it do, what is it for, etc., etc., there is a learn to solder video on my channel. A beginner's guide to soldering and I explain what flux is what it does how it helps when you should use it that sort of stuff so just uh, there you go I am actually doing more oh thank you very much Jay for that he demands attention you have my attention you have my attention um, okay Yes, we've definitely seen a, a, a jump in subscribers on the old Mac Yak channel uh, just, just very recently. We've actually got a giveaway when we get to a thousand, and we're getting close to that now. Um, the um, If you want to enter the giveaway, you need to go and watch episode 69. Um, and you will find all the steps on how to enter there. Okay, there's a tracer rib hair done. Now, one person uh, on one of my channels said, oh, I don't like the way you cut. 
the uh, wire off because you you know, potentially damage the um, traces. And look, you know, I'm I'm using a microscope here, and you're right, it, there is probably a chance of that. What you can do is you can just do a light little nick like this with this thicker wire without actually pushing all the way down. And then you can just grab the end of the wire and just give it a little bit of a backwards and forwards. And then it just breaks off by itself. So uh, if anyone is concerned about using a blade like this and pushing down on that wire and potentially doing some damage, that's a way you can avoid any problems. Right, so we're going to do a repair from Froya to Hoya. So let's get another bit of wire. We've got a bit floating here. It, uh, it won't let me enter the MacYak site. Okay, uh, you might need to elaborate on that, Michael. And certainly, the uh, there are some other MacYak guys here in the chat that might be able to assist you. Um, do do. So I'm using enameled wire for these uh, repairs. Enameled uh, wire is wire that would be typically used for an electromagnet or for um, a relay or a, uh, a transformer. And uh, it, it has a coating on it so that it is insulated. But just a little bit of heat from the soldering iron melts that coating away. So, uh, And I really do like working with this wire. Um, I, I don't know why, but I just love working with this wire. It's a great, it's a great wire. It's a very good wire, it's clean wire. <clears throat> okay, Trina, see you when you get back. Well, I probably won't see you, but... Okay. Just a figure of speech. There we go, get some solder on there. And then I'm just going to get this happening here. As you can see, I've got this really ridiculous kind of OCD type situation where I like to make these traces follow the line of the original. I could have just run a wire straight without following the line of the original, but, you know, can't quite see that off the edge there. Nice curve. Thank you. Thank you very much. I might just uh, solder right down at the end there. Oh, you missed me cutting it. Sorry. I'm sorry. There we go. It's looking good. It's looking good. And you know what? I'm not even using uh, Amtec Flux for this at the moment. I am using um, MG Chemicals because I'm just trying to do as much as I can with that. It's really not that bad, this stuff. It doesn't smell as nice as the Antec stuff, but it's pretty good, this MG Chemicals Flux. I have to say, it's not a bad alternative because I can just buy this locally. I can buy this like same day. The place that sells this is just around the road, down the road from me. Um, you know, it's like a five minute, five minute drive, 10 minute drive. So I can actually just contact them and go, I want some flux and then I'll get it ready and then I go pick it up. So um, this is this is quite good, this. I um, I might put a link to it in my description at some stage because if you are having trouble getting the Antec, this is pretty good stuff. Just saying. Okay, so that's uh, trace repair number two. The first one may not have even needed to be done, but I just didn't like the look of it. Let's now move to trace repair number three. Threats. No permission. Try different browsers, same result. Okay. No permission. Is there a permission issue on our uh, MacAC website at the moment, uh, Jay? Look at all that solder that's fallen through to the other side. Let's suck that up. Suck it up. Mr. Fahrenheit, good evening, Bruce. Good evening, y'all. Thank you for joining, Mr. Fahrenheit. My name's Mr. Celsius. Just gonna. I just don't like the way that solder was just hanging all the way through there. Just didn't like it. It's no good. Um, now I need to find where I am on this board. When you're working on two sides of the board, it's a real nightmare. Okay, so there to there. 
it's those two there. Found them, found them, found them, found them. These two. So these two here are going to have uh, traces running through them. It's trying to log in, but uh, I don't know. Everything is working. Yeah. Okay. So. Yes, I think for the uh, for the competition, I think it just should be a matter of landing on the page and uh, uh, and then just leaving a comment. I'm not sure that you need to log in to leave a comment, but I'm uh, it's, I did do it a long time ago, but uh, I forget it. Oh, my tummy is rumbling. Oopsie. Okay. These are all ready now. So basically what I did was I just prepared these traces for the wire that I'm going to poke through them and then solder down from the other side. So I'm going to actually put the wire through from the other side. And I've lost my little bit of wire. So I'm going to grab some more. I mean, here it is. So I get my wire. I'm going to poke it through the hole. Right here. Through we go. And through we go. There we go. There we go. And I might just tack it down from this side and then we'll do the rest of the work on the other side. Okay, so this is the fun stuff, the trace repair stuff. There is a certain limit that I generally put on, on trace repairs and, and I also, um, there are different computers that, that cope better with trace repairs than others and I think it's usually just to do with the way the boards are made. What I will say is the 840AV board is a nightmare um, if you have trace damage on those, um, it's bad because often there is trace damage that you can't see because they've got such tiny, weeny, weeny little traces on them. Um, the old Mac 2, I have, every single one that I've worked on has had this sort of damage. Actually, bar one, I had one that was in pristine condition. I don't know, it must have been stored in a vacuum or something. But, um, every... Mac 2 bar 1 that I've worked on has had this same sort of problem and has been a fix. Now, I don't want to curse myself, but you know. Madeline, thank you very much for that. Smash that like button. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for joining the channel. If you like it, please subscribe and smash that like button. Uh, I mentioned 840 AV and I'm getting bad flashbacks. Yeah, they're like that. Uh, there's a play on Freddie Mercury. Uh, I prefer Celsius myself. <laughs> Mr. Fahrenheit. I, I, I don't know the Freddie Mercury reference, so please do tell me. I, I do, I am a, a fan of, uh, Queen, but I don't know the Mr. Fahrenheit reference. So, and maybe it's from a song that I don't know. I, I generally only know their big hits. I, I don't actually own any albums of theirs other than the uh, best of. Um, the early albums are all named after Marx Brothers movies, weren't they? Night at the Opera and stuff like that. I love Marx Brothers movies. Okay, what I don't like about this particular repair is there's nothing to hold it on the actual corner. So, piffle is what I say to that. Piffle. Uh, don't stop me now. They call me Mr. Fahrenheit. I did not. I've never actually uh, gone into the lyrics of that song. So there you go. Don't stop me now. I'll be honest, that's not one of my favourite songs of theirs. Okay, now, because this one is out of focus, sorry about that guys, because this one is hanging out there, I'm going to have to smother this one in some, um, what do you call it, some UV solder mask to kind of hold it in position. So I will end up UV using UV solder mask as kind of like a glue to hold that trace in place. Trace in place. <laughs> right. Um, let's get some more wire, shall we? <laughs> I'd say well, I, I grew up on the Marx Brothers. Um, I've even actually seen some of their movies on the big screen. That some of these, like you know, 
uh, retro kind of things where they just show old old movies. And uh, I tell you, I think probably my, my favourites would be uh, what's the one with the viaduct? Viaduct. That's duck soup. I think that one. I could be wrong. Um, and a day at the races that's another really good one um oh what was the one with the speakeasy oh goodness me i'm i'm i'm, I'm blanking i've got most of them um they, i have managed to get hold of uh either sort of uh, dvd or digital copies of i think the most of them oh what was the one where they were on the boat Co was that the coconuts uh yeah I actually had a tie with the Marx Brothers on it. Um, you know, back in the days when I used to wear ties, and I had a tie with the faces of the four Marx Brothers on it. I think, or was it only the three of them? Because I think there were five. There was uh, uh, Groucho, Harpo, uh, Chico, uh, Zeppo, and then there was Gummo. But Gummo never appeared in any of the movies. He was only on their live stage show. Um, so Zeppo was in some of the movies, but not all of them. Um, but anyway, I, at the time, might have only had the three, just Groucho, Chico, and Harpo. And I remember I was at a shopping centre once, um, and a, a young girl at the at the cash register, she said, oh, I like your tie. I said, oh, thank you. I said, do you know who they are? And she just pointed to Groucho, and she said, I know that one. And of course, you know, let's face it, Groucho with the, uh, you know, the painted on moustache and everything, I mean, the... The, the, you used to be able to buy those glasses with the moustache hanging down the bottom, you know, the, the Groucho, Groucho glasses. Um, if anyone's wondering what that noise is, it's um, dried up figs falling off the fig tree, which is above this roof, and they come down with such incredible velocity, that, and they hit the metal roof, and they, yeah, it sounds rather horrendous. Terrifies me. Terrifies me when I'm working on stuff with high voltage. So I'll be sitting here just going, yeah, okay, 240 volts AC, being careful, being super careful, and then they have a big pop like that, and then I just freak out. So, yeah. Doctor, no, I've got that song in my head now. It's your fault, Mr. Fahrenheit, it's your fault. <laughs> Off you come. Off you come. Thank you. Uh, okay, I've got to go. Let's, you know, there was a great line by Groucho. I can't remember what it is, but it was just one of my favourites. Mm. Um, Adblock off. Still get error four hundred three forbidden. I I have no idea. I, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to uh, post a, a link on this, but I've just got, not, I'm not sure. You make a comment thing, or are you clicking elsewhere? Okay, thank you, Steve, for, for helping him out. Uh, okay, Nick Y, all I can recommend is put on a jumper. Um, don't stop me now. Now I've got to do the other side of this trace. The other one I did the other side first, and this time I did the other side second. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. I think the main thing that I like about this, this um, flux that I'm using at the moment, the MG Chemicals, it seems to last a little bit longer. Um, before kind of burning away it seems to do its flux thing for a little bit longer this is nice don't stop me now far out <clears throat> okay we're just going to suck some of this extra um, solder out just when I've been working on this from the other side, this solder has kind of fallen through the board. I just want to clean that up a little bit. Right, so we are now down to, that's three trace repairs we have done. Or is it four? Could be four. I think it's four. 
So we are definitely making progress so everyone is happy and that. Oh, the board's upside down. Okay. You never know, Mr. Fahrenheit, until you try. But remember, I was never able to do traces like this once upon a time. Trace repairs like this. I had to practice. I had to practice. Right, so this one here is a right mess. So we're going to run a trace repair for this one. I'm just going to get a little bit more copper exposed on this side. So I've got a little bit more anchor for it. I like to tin these before I start uh, soldering. So we're going to fluxify. There we go. There we go. Did you recap already? Well, this is an interesting one, Christopher. So this is one that was recapped by the customer. But having said that, they didn't finish it. They recap. They they've they've missed four caps. They haven't done, and they've actually done quite a good job of the ones they recapped. I had a chat chat to the guy, and the, the naked eye it didn't look too bad. And even under the microscope, they're not bad at all. So, um, so I've got to put on uh, the I've got to replace the axial capacitors, and I've got to stick on one, two, three, four, five caps that he didn't do. No, sorry, four four caps that he didn't do. So it sort of has been recapped already, uh, but. Not completely. Um, so uh, let us let us begin or continue with the trace repairs. Uh, this is these are actually moving through quite quickly. I thought I would be here forever, but um, I'm I'm quite happy with the progress here. Um, I had a uh, a mat come to me recently um, with trace damage, oh, it was a Powermax 6500 from uh, battery damage, and it didn't look too bad at a glance, but once I had a chance to get it under the microscope, it was horrendous. There were so many damaged traces, and I could even see damaged veers. I could see veers that had no copper in them, and that always scares me. There's veers, which are the things, these little things here, that go from one layer of the board to the other. Don't always just go from the top of the board to the bottom. Sometimes they go to an inner layer. So these boards are often like, you know, usually probably five layers, I'd say, maybe four, four or five layers. Um, and if that via is um, uh, trying, you know, trying to send some, uh, some electricity to an inner layer and that via is completely gone, you don't know where that was meant to go unless you have either A, a good board to go around and check with, or uh, a schematic. And I have neither. Uh, and I looked at that board and I counted the number of trace repairs. I calculated how long it was going to take me. And then I also weighed up the fact that there is a chance that there is going to, once I have done all those trace repairs, it still won't work because there might be some stuff that I can't see. I went back to the customer and I said, I have to be honest with you, I do not believe this is a good repair to start on. Because I don't like I don't like charging people for stuff that doesn't work. And I don't think it's going to work after I've finished with it. So I don't want to spend all that time working and then either A have to charge you for something that doesn't work, or B not charge you and then me not get any money for doing all that work. Um, so I sometimes have to just make that call or ultimately let the, the customer make the call. I can give you a different example where I said to a customer, I think it was going to take a really long time. And they basically said, it, this, it's worth it to me. Go ahead and do the work. So, um, yeah, but it's just, it is difficult. But with something like this, I can say with a fair degree of confidence that I will be able to get this one working afterwards. Anyone who saw my last Macintosh 2 stream, which is a two-parter, started off with the recapping and then with the trace repair. Got that one working. Hip to bob the hip. Um, okay, Steve. See you when you get back. 
Still have a prototype LC that I need you to fix. Haven't sent it yet. Um, yeah, so is that... That's one of the ones that has the great big capacitor on it, yeah? Um, some of the early LCs, um, one of the uh, capacitors at the top of the board is a huge um, electrolytic capacitor rather than just a little surface mount one. The later ones just have a surface mount, so... They're interesting. Um, I've never actually come across one. But I've seen lots of photos. Well, I need some flux here. So this trace here is fine. Uh, it's carrying electricity, but I just don't like the look of it. So I am just doing this little bit of trace repair. Try and do it as neatly as possible because that's just my way, man. That's my thing. Do -do -do. Come on. There we go. And then we'll take it along here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. SD card with several images to boot for my version 5.4 several images um it's it's quite tricky with a SCSI to sd to do several images um the version 5.5 will allow you to have four different SCSI ids but there is no way to select which SCSI id you want it to boot from uh, it's not like uh, the modern max where you can just hold down the option key and see all the different drives that come up and then select which one you want they don't work like that on the Mac. You have to boot from one and then you can, once you're in there, set your startup disk. Um, but it's not like the modern Macs that have a startup screen where you can select what you want to boot from. So you can create uh, multiple partitions um, and put different um, systems on each one. Sure, you can absolutely do that. But when it actually comes time to select which one you want, let's just say, for example, you set it up with the system 6, system 7.0, 7.1, 7 7.5, something like that. When you then connect it up to the computer, you don't get to choose which one it's going to boot from. It might boot from system 7.5 on a computer that needs system 6, and it'll just come up and say the system doesn't work on this. You don't have the option to then go in and change it, unless you can actually boot from a working system and then select which one you want it to boot from. So you just have to consider that what you can do, um, and this is what I have done, is when you hold down Shift, Option, Command, Delete with a Mac, what it does is it... So normally when a Mac boots, it boots from SCSI ID 0 up. So it tries to find if there's anything at 0. If there's nothing at 0, it tries to find anything at 1. And 2, 4, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it goes from, it's from low to high when it's, um, when it's booting. If you hold Shift, Option, Command, Delete down while the computer's booting, it goes the opposite direction. It tries to find um, its SCSI IDs from six down. So if you have an internal hard drive that's set on zero, and then you put an external hard drive in that's set at six, you hold Shift, Option, Command, Delete down, it's gonna boot from the one that's six rather than the one that's from zero. Now what you can do is you can set up multiple, um, uh, multiple, sys multiple you know, drives uh, of the SCSI to SD as an emulator. You can set up multiple um, uh, IDs. So you can set up a, a OneDrive for ID 4, one for 5, one for 6. Now you can then go into the SCSI, um, SCSI, a SCSI to SD, um, uh, what do you call it, the utility, and you can then tell it that you want this one to be ID 6, uh, and then you can change it. You can go back and say, okay, I don't want this one to be 6, I want this one to be 6, and you shuffle the numbers around so that the one you want to boot from will be ID 6, and then you can select which one you want to boot from that way. But it's unfortunately not just a simple matter of just getting a whole bunch of partitions if you want to be able to you know, choose what to boot from. 
Um, so anyhow, that's that's the that's the kind of long answer to what you're wanting to do there, Michael. I don't know, um, you know, how that is going to work out in terms of what you have in mind. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, it'd be nice if there was things like a startup screen on those old Macs, like we have on the new Macs, but we don't. Well, they didn't introduce that until. When did they introduce that? Was it System Nine or was it System? 10 of the uh, system 8 I think where you could actually get it to bring up a startup I think it was system 9 right so we've got to repair this little guy here um, going from here to here is nice and easy I'm just going to run him along there just like that so get some flux uh, okay Okay, can you do Command Option Shift Delete SCSI ID? Have you ever tried that, Mr. Fahrenheit? Because I sure have. It doesn't seem to freaking work for me. <laughs> I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, or maybe it only works on more recent Macs, but I have never been able to get that to work for me. Um, so certainly not on the old Macs, like an old uh, SE30 or something like that. Yes, the old that is that is what it's meant to be. It meant it, that's that's what they say is that it's you hold down. Um, shift option command delete and then the number of the ID you want I have never been able to get that to work so if you know some sort of magic trick for getting that to work please do share it this one ain't going to be as neat as some of my other ones um, and that just comes just out of the situation we're in here um, and it's not going to be gross but Little bit of flux. Okay, so it works on real drives. Okay, well, it certainly doesn't work on SCSI to SDs. So um, I have definitely tried that on a SCSI to SD where I've had a SCSI to SD set up with multiple partitions multiple, um, sorry, not multiple partitions, multiple IDs. So I'll have the SCSI to SD set up with ID four, five, six, seven, four, no, sorry, three, four, five, six, something like that. And I hold down the keys and it makes no difference. It just always boots from the top one, boots, boots from six. So that's, uh, that must be something related to the uh, SCSI to SD. It must be, must be. Now I'm sure there are still more broken ones, right? There is that it, that can't be it. Can it be it? I felt like there was more. Let's go hunting. Let's go hunting. I think it's it. I do. Oh, I wanted to get some solar under this guy, didn't I? Got a big glob of solar under this one. Okay, nice curve. Thank you very much, Steve. Okay. Just want to get a whole big clump of solar on this guy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's going through the hole. Come on. That'll do. Uh, <clears throat> 7.1. So... Looks like 7.1 will have to do how much. So uh, that first SD card that I sent you um, is system 7.1. So And it's a multi-boot system 7.1. It'll start up on just about any Mac that will support system 7.1. So you've kind of already got that card at the moment. Um, it's just a matter of making the um, SCSI to SD um, recognize the card from that first card that I sent you. And that's a fairly simple process because it, you just need to copy the settings from the first SCSI to SD that I sent you to the other one. So you've got the 5.1 and you've got the 5.5. .5. 
what you do is you connect the SCSI 5.1, the one that I sent you, to SCSI Utility. And you go from the menu, from the SCSI to SD Utility, you go Load From Device. And it'll load all the settings from that 5.1. Then you disconnect the 5.1 and you plug in the 5.5 and then you go Save to, de save to Device. So you've essentially pulled all of the settings from the 5.1 and then you save them to the 5.5 and then it should work there. So um, you, then you should be able to just put that original SD card in there and it should just recognize it and understand it and know what it is and, and it should be fine. Right, now. Um, uh, I may... His USB power somehow fried it after 15 minutes. Crikey. Uh, Alex is awesome. Sent me another. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now um, I incidentally have, I got a bad batch of uh, SCSI ID um, 5.1s. Um, I fixed them. Um, but uh, I didn't want to have to send them all the way back to China again. So but there was a problem with the um, uh, card reader, which I had to fix. Uh, and it was on all of them. I've got a batch of, I think, I bought four of them at one time, and it was on all of them. And I, had to, and I fix, had to fix all of them. But such is life. Cest la vie. Um, okay. Um, that's the... Uh, Australia massacring other languages. We like doing that. But there's another capacitor here I didn't remove. Who the hell do I think I am? Look at it. Look at this guy. Sitting there being all capacitory. Bing. Bing, 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 bing. Look at all of that. Look at all that copper. I should mention that there is a um, a SCSI uh, to SD utility coming out as an app rather than that little terminal app as a proper application. Uh, they've sent me a demo of it. Um, it doesn't do much because it's not finished. But it would be nice to have it not as a terminal app. I need to buy more. I, I, I just, I have so many people contacting me saying, hey, I've heard you sell SCSI to SDs. You know, can I buy one from you, um, you know, in Australia? And uh, and I, I literally, I buy them and they go, they just go. So I should probably have more, but it's just, it's, it's a lot of money for me to fork out up front. That's the only problem. It's not being very cooperative, this pin, is it? Mm -hmm. Come on. You're making me look bad. Stop it. Stop it. If I push it through. I think I might need to come with this from the other side. What do you reckon? Oh, far out. What time is it? One o'clock. <gasps> Shivers. Shivers regal. <clears throat> Mac Plus is very picky about booting for SCSI devices. Yes, it is. Yes, your Mac Plus, I'm afraid. Uh, Michael, looks like it really needs some work. Um, I saw those. Uh, I saw those posts you did there. Your analog board needs some TLC, I'm afraid. Okay, let's see if we can have a bit more success from this side. 
Ugh, picked up a whole bunch of gunk. Do internals because they're actually play nice when put into external vintage external enclosures? They absolutely do. Yes, indeed. Um, okay, I reckon we'll get that one out now. <sighs> Flippity dip. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So I just got to get the uh, solar out of these holes, which will probably be a nightmare. But I don't want to be doom and gloom. If the CRT wobbles on a plus, is that cold solder joints or analog board caps? Uh, I would always check the solder first, always, um, because that is the most likely problem they have. Can be other things. It can be flyback. It can be deflection transistor. It can be caps. You know, there are lots of things that can be. But I would always start with the solder joints because every single Mac Plus I have ever had brought to me has had cracked solder joints. Bad ones. So that's where you start. Ow! Just sprinkle hot solder on my leg. I love the Mac Plus, I have to say. By the way, we should, of course, mention the old uh, uh, Apple serial number website. Uh, J. Vry, House of Moth, his website, Apple Serial Number Info dot com. Uh, if he is still around and listening, he will probably put a link up to it. Uh, last month, there was the Mac of the Month competition. And I won't say that I tried to influence people but i did suggest to people that it would be maybe a good idea to vote for the 512k um and uh the 512k won so if you were one of those people that voted and helped contribute to that uh that little exercise uh, i thank you very much jay doesn't thank you because he wanted the g4 to win but never mind um Another thing I do want to mention is that he does have a new competition up for the next month. Now, with this one, it was very hard for me to pick one. Um, I, I kind of had to ask myself, and I think I voted wrong in the end. Uh, I had to ask myself, of all of those Macs there, which one would I like the most? Which one would I like to have in my collection the most? And I think I ended up voting... For Voting for the wrong one to some extent. So I ended up voting for, I think, the G5. I've got a bit of a, a fondness for the G5 because um, it, the G5, the earlier G5, 2003 is the one that I have, but 2003 G5 is, I think, the first um, um, brand new Mac I bought with my own money. I'm pretty sure. Um, so I voted for that one, but at the same time I was thinking, well, if it came to having one in my collection, I'd probably prefer to have the Macintosh TV. As stupid as that computer was, stupid, um, I, um, I, I think I would like to have one in my collection. So I probably should have voted for the Macintosh TV, but, uh, you know, um, I, I, I make silly mistakes from time to time. And of course, the MacBook Pro 17-inch uh, 2011 model. Now, we know all the issues with the GPU, but I'd like having to have one of them as well. Uh, I'd like to have one. I do actually have one over there, but it's been run over by a car, so it doesn't, get, it doesn't work very well. 
Um, do, do, do. And actually, I've, I've, I do actually have the uh, 2011 board floating around somewhere, but it is. Uh, 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 it's got a dead GPU. Yay! Dead GPU. So this one's proving to be a little bit uh, annoying. I'm trying to get the solder out of this hole, but we'll keep trying. Today is your day. I'm coming up from the other side. Okay, Emac. Yes, now look. So, Mike Smackshack, thank you for joining, Mike. Welcome to the stream. Um, the um, I did give your channel a little plug before. Um, I'll give it another plug. Mike Smackshack, jump on and have a look. Some cool stuff he's been doing there at the moment with uh, an old. Uh, IBM Luggable, um, and of course, you must check out Mac 84, I think, tomorrow, because I think Mike's heading over there, and they're going to mess around with floppy drives and and that uh, that IBM thingy, um, so uh, yeah, but anyhow, I, I digress. Um, the eMac, I, I like the eMac, I like the look of the eMac, um, but I don't like the space that it takes up or the weight of the thing. And they are just such a pain to move. And of course, they do have um, inherent um, failure problems. Uh, I, I, as one of the things that I did mention is that for me, a, one of the features of any computer is its longevity. And the Emacs are all, well, not all, but some of the Emacs are having problems. So... Um, I'm not a big fan of that. So basically what's happened in, with this particular selection of computers that Jay has chosen for um, his website. My goodness, this one is giving me some grief. What the hell, man? Oh, what have I done? Far out. I've done something. I've gone full screen. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <gasps> Shivers. No, that's not what I wanted. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. Oh, come on. No. Okay, that's better. That's better. Is that scared me? I lost the chat there for a second, so I apologize, everyone. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, one of the things I did actually mention to, um, uh, sort of to Jay was that for me, when it comes to choosing one of those Macs, one of the things that I consider to be an important feature is its longevity, its ability to be able to survive without some sort of inherent weakness. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I did choose the 512 last time, because the 512s are pretty good. And yes, they can have problems, but they're pretty, you know, you, if you get hold of a 512K these days, there's a good chance you can just plug it in and switch it on and it'll just work. But of the four Macs that he's got there on his, his choices today, um, we've got the um, the eMac, which of course, as I say, they have problems now. A lot of those eMacs have problems now, flickery screens and stuff like that. They have, There is the G5, well, that was the liquid-cooled one, I think. So that was the 2005. And of course, they have leakage on the liquid cooling system. There's the um, Macintosh TV. Well, they got horrendous capacitor leakage on the tuner card and the logic board. And then you've got the um, um, the MacBook Pro uh, 2011 uh, with, of course, the uh, the crappy GPUs. So, how do you say about that? Not a single reliable one amongst them. Yeah, <laughs> Macintosh TV has a measly 8 megabyte limit. Yeah, I don't know what were Apple thinking when they did that. Come on, guys. It looks like it's through, but it's not. It's just full of black stuff. Come on, I, this is just getting ridiculous. I was so close to being finished. Ba -da -da -da. Ba -da -da -da. Da -da 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 
So, he lists his equipment. Yes, he does. There's every, pretty much everything I use is in that description, along with links where you can buy it. Uh, and I also have quite a lot of links to more inexpensive, or less expensive options of what I use. Uh, I don't use the best out there, but I don't use the worst either. But there, uh, there are plenty of the you know things out there. I mean, I started with a cheap hot air station. I started with a cheap soldering iron, and they all worked. You know, they all did the job. These ones do a little bit better, but you know. Um, so. Uh, would I be correct in saying, Mike, from Mike's Mac Shack, would I be correct in saying that you have voted for the EMAC on, uh, on Jay's page? Yep, EMAC all day. Yep, okay, fair enough. Look, okay, so I can't blame you. They're, they're, they're a nice looking Mac. They are a nice looking Mac. I'm not going to take that away and, you know, and they're, you know, they're, reasonably powerful and everything and they have that lovely crystal clear sharp flat screen beautiful screen on those things but they're just so heavy right now i wonder if anyone could tell me where i would find some sort of guide on how to recap one of these mac 2s where the capacitors go that sort of stuff wonder if there's like a website that talks about recapping things that uh you know maybe is like uh, recap a mac that'd be a good name for a website like that um this is the revision b board that we're looking at here at the moment as opposed to the revision a board so there is a, yes there it is recap a mac and you will find links to cheat sheets like this one here that show you what caps go where some of them actually have information where to buy the caps so uh, uh, eventually they all will but at the moment they don't oh pardon me okay do you have press g through processor overlaid yep I, I should say, I did have an EMAC. Um, I sold it though, a long time ago, during my purge. And I haven't really been in a situation to grab another one because I don't have anywhere to put it. Don't have enough space. Um, Got to get some caps. Let's get some caps, shall we? Ah, oh, standing up. Ouchies. Let's hope I didn't show too much of my... Uh, buttocks when I reached up and grabbed that there. Ah, we can do without that. And... Alright. Sorry, old man noises. There we go. There are the axial caps. <clears throat> axial caps. And then these are my surface mount electrolytics. So... Uh, what sort of line might I have it? 03 dual 1.8 gigahertz G5. It uses a file server. Um, I actually, uh, as I mentioned before, you know, the, um, the G5 was the first, um, the first brand new computer I ever bought. And I have a, um, uh, an 03. I've, I've even got the date that I bought it, but I have an 03. And it's a dual 2 gigahertz version. It was the big one at the time. I had that loaded up with as much RAM as you can possibly put in it because, um, well, that RAM is so cheap now, I thought, why not? Then I have that set up at my desk, my work desk in, in my office, um, where I've got, I've got my um, Classic Mac Pro on the left, and then I've got the G5 on the right. So they sit right next to each other. And then I have it set up with, you know, sort of uh, screen sharing so that I can boot up the, uh, I, can, I can boot up the G5 and then just look at the G5 screen on my um, Mac Pro. And it's really handy. I have a dual boot set up with 10.6 and 10.4 .4 and 10.5. So I can go on to 10.4 if I want to launch Classic, and then I can go on to 10.5 if I want, you know, sort of well, a better operating system. Um, um, actually, I shouldn't say better operating system. I should say more compatibility with modern software. That's probably what I should say. If I said better operating system, I'm likely to get the wrath of J. And none of us want that. Okay, we've got the cap going on here. We're nearly finished, by the way, folks, which is good because I'm running out of time. Running out of time. Just applying a little bit of hot air to get this adhesive off. 
because it goes a bit gooey when it gets hot. It makes it easy to remove. Um, let's get some flux onto here. Now there's a lot going on in the chat here, quite, going quite quickly. I am missing some of it, so um, please, um, uh, if uh, you ask me anything or if you mention something and I don't reply, don't freak out. It's just once, I, I'm not sure how many, we're up to what, 40 viewers. Once we get to sort of like 40 viewers, the, the chat ends up happening so fast I miss things. I look down, I stick a cap on and I look up and there's all this stuff I've missed, so... Don't forget to, uh, Andrew, hello, how's it going? Thank you for joining. Okay, ouch, don't want to burn myself. Especially not on a live stream. Okay, so. <laughs> yes, I, I definitely won't badmouth Tiger at all. But what I did find, in particular when we did the PowerPC challenge last year, the first time I've done the PowerPC challenge, is, um, and I, um, what I found when I was doing the PowerPC challenge, I was able to do a lot with the PowerPC, like way more than I expected. Groody is here. Hello. Thank you very much for the super chat. That is much appreciated. Big old plug for Root K Mods channel. You got any new videos coming out, Groody? I, uh... I saw a little bit of video that uh, I, I am hoping is going to be part of a bigger video. Saw a little bit today of your little visit. So are you back home already? Um, Rudy survived his trip. Yep. Um, so uh, and I and I uh, I saw a picture that appeared that you had a a, a trunk full of stuff. So uh, so I think that makes for good. Uh, Good video content, so I'm hoping that we'll see something soon. Uh, short did though. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so, yeah, so um, so anyhow, as I was saying, when we're doing the um, the the uh, the Power PC challenge with the Macyakas, what I basically found was that when I was running 10.5, I could do a lot. There was a lot of software that I could run. Uh, that would allow me to kind of do my job, my normal day job, on uh, G5 and do it quite well, I might say, you know, quite quickly, because I was all using period-specific software. Uh, whereas 10.4, there just weren't as many things that worked on it, and that was the only issue I had. Now, of course, 10.4 at the time, great, but um, you know, I mean, uh, I just, as I say, just there were more more things that I was able to find that would run on 10.5. So that was the only reason why I have dual boot 10.4, 10.5 on there. Uh, what I also use that G5 for is for copying stuff to the SD cards for my SCSI, S, SCSI to SD. So if I want to transfer something to one of us, my SCSI to SDs nice and quickly, I can just get um, a... Uh, uh, just take out the uh, SD card from the SCSI to SD plug it into my 10.5 or 10.4 G5 and just copy stuff straight to it. Can't do that on the modern Macs, unfortunately, because they won't write to the old Apple, what is it, HFS file format. They just won't do it. Come on, come on, get it together. Does he look crooked to you? Does he? This obviously this board looks really awful. Just reminding everyone that after I do this, this will go into an ultrasonic cleaner and come out looking squeaky clean. It'll still have all these ugly trace repairs on it, but I will uh, I will uh, put UV solder mask on top of those. Mr. Fahrenheit, thank you very much. Much appreciated. Thank you for everything you do for our community. Oh, that's a very nice thing to say. Thank you for that. Um, okay. Yeah, after it's the hell I went through uh, out of my way to find Tiger compatible software. Yeah, that's it. Uh, crack whiz bang coder. <laughs> um, uh, the metal business. He looks swole. 
What's swall? Can anyone tell me what swall is? Um, right, so I've got to get these um, axial caps on here. Oh, actually, there's one more cap I need to put up there, which is a 10 microfarad 16 volt. Originally started its life as an axial cap. I'm going to replace it with a surface mount because it's got surface mount pads. So why not? 10 microfarad 16 volt. A little. 10 microfarad 16 volt. Little guy. <coughs> Pardon me. Do do. Yep. Why are there three dislikes? I get I get people that dislike my channel all the time, and I I I actually it's kind of good. Um, it's sort of it might not seem good, but but there there are a couple of things I like about it. First of all, um, I, it kind of makes me feel like. Um, you know, I've grown this channel to a certain size that I get enough people that people actually go to the trouble of watching a video and putting a thumbs down on it, which I think is like, it's kind of cool. So it's a nice ego trip for me when I, when I see that. Um, and the other is that, um, well, YouTube doesn't care whether it's an up or a down. It still considers an interaction. So that doesn't bother me. Um, and the other thing is that this is a really important thing. This is the best thing about the thumbs down. Um, it's always a conversation starter. Um, people always talk about it. They always go, hey, why is there a thumbs down? And the next thing you know, we have a discussion about there being a thumbs down. And it's great. So, yeah, thumbs down is good. Uh, too much for a 16 yet. That's a tiny little cap. I have obviously pissed some people off at some stage. Um, this is going to happen. Maybe people left comments that I deleted or something like that. I'm generally of the mind that I'm quite happy for comments to sit on my channel. I don't really mind what they say. I don't mind whether they're, you know, I don't mind if, if someone puts something on the channel and says you're an idiot or something. I really don't care about that. But when someone puts in the description, oh, you shouldn't do it that way, you should do it this way, and then puts some great big long description of describing a, a method that I don't endorse, I delete those because I don't want it to cause confusion for someone watching the video to see to see something like that and go, oh, I might try doing it that way. And it's like, well, I don't actually endorse doing it that way. I think that's a mistake doing it that way. So, you know, if that person wants to set up their own channel and do a video on that process, that's fine. But they don't use my channel as a, an avenue for, you know, promoting their methods of doing things. I've never said that the way that I do things is the right way. It's just the way that works for me. Um, and, um, uh, and yeah, if, 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 if sometimes people recommend things that I think, yeah, actually, that's not a bad thing, and I leave those in. But if someone goes in and recommends something that I think is a bad idea, I delete them. So, um, now, I did see, when I was faffing around with these caps down here, I did see a tracer I wanted to have a look at a little bit closer. Uh, where was it? Can anyone remember? Yeah, it was right there. See the dot? So I check my yep, there's copper under it. So everything's fine. Jolly jolly. <coughs> um, I've developed the uh, my own way of doing things. It's a combination of four different people's techniques, and that is absolutely excellent. And that's exactly what you see when you see me uh, working as well. A lot of what I do is a combination of different techniques that I've picked up from different people. Uh, and then some of the things that I've just added as I've gone, you know, where I've, you know, I might think, oh, I can see a better way of doing that. Who was it that was recommending the other day? Someone recommended something to me. I can't remember who it was. And it was something that I used to do. And I thought to myself, geez, I really should mention this in the channel because I, whenever I remove caps, I use these, um, I use these heat shields which are basically just blades from a knife. And I use these to shield plastic or components from heat from the hot air station. Now, before I was using these, what I used to use was aluminium foil or aluminum foil, or sometimes incorrectly referred to as tin foil. 
Um, I uh, used to use aluminium foil as a heat shield. Then I stopped using it, I started using this because of the way I can hold these in place. But what I should always mention in my videos is that aluminium foil can actually be really good. And the main reason is that because you can shape it and get it to stay in positions. So there are times when I'm working in a really awkward position and I might be having trouble getting those heat shields into a particular position. You can just get some you know, aluminium foil and just shape it around there and push it down and stuff like that. And that can actually work as a really good um, heat shield. And I should include that in my videos because I did always use aluminium foil before I started using the blades. So there you go. <sighs> Right, okay, um, it's 1.30 now. Um, uh, I've got to get these caps on and get this tested. So we're just going to get these axial caps in place because I am running out of time. Um, uh, I need one two twenty. 220 microfarad, and I need 3, 470. Uh, bing, bing, bing. Oopsie, doozy, whoopsie, thing. Uh, okay, what do we got here? Uh, da, da, da. Is Captain Tape enough insulation uh, from a heat gun? It depends what you're doing with it. Um, it can be enough for certain things, but for example, if you are pointing a heat gun at, say, um, a piece of plastic on the board and you had taped some Captain Tape around that piece of plastic, that's not going to be enough. It's going to melt inside it. Captain Tape can kind of, with that, assist. It can also be used to hold things in position. But Captain Tape, um, you know, is, is very thin. And although it is heat resistant tape, it, it, it heat can still get around it and get through it. So, um, right. Right, so I'm just bending the pins here, putting this cap in, and I'm just hoping I got them. Yeah, it's close enough. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, so I should probably go to this view for this, shouldn't I? There's no point in looking at the microscope for that. None at all. <sighs> I do have an issue at the moment. I, I really should contact this guy and just say, look, running a little bit late. But I just, I'm so close at this stage. It would just be a mean thing to finish this stream without, you know, plugging this into a power supply and testing it out. Okay, we've got our capacitors here, and then we've got another one which is going to live there. It's your new home, buddy. This is quite amazing that we're working with these. I mean, if you were tr trying to explain this to someone who doesn't understand wh what it is that I'm actually doing at the moment, what are you doing? Oh, I'm. Um, Restoring a 30 year old computer, uh, and then of course, the well, why? I mean, my watch has got more computing power than that. Why on earth would you want to restore it? It is kind of hard to explain this to people. Um, you know, I mean, you talk about the nostalgia, I could say, Well, I used to own one of these, so that's why I want to have it fixed up. Um, but it, is, it just does seem weird to be doing this to be restoring a computer with such low power you know it's by comparison to the computing power today as i say i mean my watch would have so much more processing power than this solder solder Okay, that look good. I'm happy. I thought, I, you know, I actually thought to myself, I thought, you know, I'm going to get this one done so quickly 
I'll have time to probably recap another computer in the same live stream. I've got an SE30 up here, up here, that needs recapping. I thought, yeah, I'll just do that at the end of this one. I don't know myself very well, do I? Not age yet. Right, there's those three in. Let's make sure I got the polarity around the right way, because I have been known to put these on backwards before. Yep, they're all good. And then this little guy. No, not this little guy. This little guy. This little guy. Bill, hello. Welcome to the stream. Hate to say it, but the Mac 2 wasn't exactly a powerful computer when it was new. This is true. This is true. 68020, 16 megahertz. Um, what did it do? What did it bring us? It brought us a modular Mac. It brought us the ability for expansion, which of course we didn't have on the compact Macs before. Um, we had, um, we had, you know, sort of, so we have, you know, eight memory slots. We've got, uh, what is it? Six new bus slots. Uh, we've got a math coprocessor on this thing. Um, you know, two floppy drives, you know, scuzzy, you know, the whole bit. So, um, it brought us something that Apple had not brought us before. And so that was kind of a, a, a cool thing, but yeah, um, the, they weren't exactly the duck's guts, as we would say. Right, we've got another little cap to just put on here. It's handy. We're heading into uh, bird noise time of the year, so uh, my live streams are going to have lots of bird noises in them over the coming weeks. It is spring here, and I can hear the sound of, I think it might be a coel, but I could be wrong. Um... That was just a uh, um, an Indian minor bird. Because uh, it does bother some people. I've actually had people leave comments in my uh, videos saying, oh, the, all the bird noises, oh, I don't like it. Like, okay. All right, so we've got caps on here. We've got trace repairs on here. What we don't have are battery holders on here, and that is one thing that we're going to need to uh, need to sort out. So um, uh, here we go. Sorry, I need to. Uh, it brought us color. Yes, of course. That's the. I did mention that at the beginning of the stream. Color is the really the most important thing. First Mac with color, really. Uh, I mean, I know that there were color options for some of the compact Macs, but yeah. Um, uh, I think the 6802 was four times as fast as 68,000 SC. The LC was half as fast as the two because it's six bit versus 32 bit. Yes, the LC was a dog. Um, let me see the SC. New bus slots were actually slower and narrower than the PDS slot on the SC. Um, the SC hardly had any cards for that that PDS slot. Um, technically the 6802 is an overclock 68k. Well, how about that? 68, oh, 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 oh. Um, it's prettier though. It's a nice little socket chip like that. There again. Gold on the top. It's shiny. Um, now, battery holders. Now, this is going to be tricky because this is a battery holder I have here. And the holes... Um, the position of the holes is not good. So I'm probably going to have to modify this slightly. <clears throat> I think what I'm going to have to do for the purpose of this live stream, just to keep everyone happy, is bodge something with the batteries. Just to start off with, because I am going to have to probably take a little bit of time to get these battery holders on. But I just realized that I haven't sucked the solder out of these holes. So what the hell was I thinking? What the hell? that through? I don't know. That's through. Let's see, is that through? Not through. Do, 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 do. This is grubby, this hole. Oh, that looks through. Yep, that's through. Just exposing this copper, I can see a lot of black gunk on it. I want to make sure that the copper is exposed so that when I 
solder to it, the solder is going to stick to it. That's what we want. Solder works better when it's sticking. What's the latest on your DIY ultrasonic cleaner? At this particular time, it is working quite well. Uh, I had to re, re um, what do you call it? Re, um, there's a word for it, but I can't think of it. I had to redo a transformer. Uh, what I basically discovered is that, so I didn't stick the transducers on the bottom well enough, whether that be because of the adhesive or because of my surface preparation. I have prepared the surfaces differently now, but eventually almost all of the transducers fell off. So I had to glue them on sort of a bit at a time, and then eventually I just went, look, I'm just going to tear them all off and re-glue all of them. So I did. So I tear, tore all of them off, all of the remaining ones off, and re-glued them. And so far so good. We'll see. If they fall off again, I'm going to start using a different sort of adhesive rather than the JB Weld. Um, but what I did find out, this is what I discovered, was that if they fell off when I wasn't watching, so, for instance, I leave this for half an hour or something and they fall off at some stage during that ultrasonic clean. Having those transducers working, not stuck onto the bottom of the thingy, that's what causes the transformers to melt on the power supplies. And that's why I had to go in and repair them. So I initially thought it was just they were made like garbage. And they are. But they were melting because they were running for too long without the transducer attached to the bottom of the tub. The transducer is just hanging there it causes that transformer to melt and then I have to rewire it. So, But I've got pretty good at rewiring them now. So if it happens again, I can do it. And I've got the right the right wire. This is the transformer wire here, uh, 0.8 millimeter. I have to wrap about 4.1 or 4.2 meters of the stuff around the thing. But got it working. Um, so uh, does it need both the PRAM and the second battery? Now, it probably doesn't need the PRAM for just for testing. It only needs the startup one. Um, B1 and B2. Uh, any Australians here? B1 and B2? Bananas in pyjamas. Now, uh, I need to work out which one is which. Which one? I think this one's involved with the startup circuit because of all this stuff going on here. So this one is the startup circuit one. B1. So shall we try just wiring up B1? Sorry, I bumped the microphone there. Let's get some wire. Got me some wire. There's some wire. I am sorry that I am having to rush this, but I did uh, say to someone I would be there at 2, and it's now 1.39, and I still haven't tested this, and evil, evil, I'm durable. So I'm just going to strip this wire. Boop, boop, boom. Get my little wire strippers here. And should probably tin these first, shouldn't I? Shouldn't I? Shouldn't I? Shouldn't I? Shouldn't I? Just going to do a quick little reply here. Right. So let's get some solder onto these. There we go. And then we'll plonk this one into. Oh, there's a the positive. So I'm going to accentuate the positive there. And then we're going to eliminate the negative here. So that is not actually what I'm going to do. I'm not going to eliminate the negative. I'm going to just wire it up to the negative terminal. <coughs> I did actually, I, I got a Mac, uh, uh, that two sent to me once, that was done like this, wired like this, with these with two wires and then the battery terminals hanging out. Um, and it's obviously because the battery holder doesn't quite fit in there. But I have found ways of modifying those battery holders to fit in there. Oh, geez, do I have a speaker for this? I hope so. And... Here's the positive. Okay. Come on, 
Come on. Come on. Stay here. Stay here where I can see you. Come on. There's, sometimes in soldering, three hands is really useful. I'm rushing this, but it doesn't matter because this is not a permanent solution. This is very much a non-permanent solution. Okay. Uh, positive. Uh, uh, uh. Because it takes a little <laughs> while to set up the test rig for this, because I need to put on a display card and and everything and SCSI to SD and a keyboard and, and I don't know what I. Yeah, we're seeing we're seeing ugly soldering. That's why I'm not microscoping you. So, all right. So I've got a little battery holder here now connected up. I've got a battery floating around here somewhere. So I can connect that up. Now, whoopsie do. Now I've got some RAM floating around. I hope this is okay. It's probably fairly fast RAM, but I think it will still work in it. Uh, what have we got? That one. That one. That one, that one. Okay. Cool. Just going to start off with the four in bank A. Oh. So the way this is designed, it's got two banks of four, and you have to have the same ones in in the bank in each bank. So bank A. I've got four ones in there. I could put four ones in here and four twos in here, but uh, I can't mix up uh, ones and twos in this bank. So, uh, okay. Now uh, I've got a few things here that I will need in order to test. One of them, namely, is a display card. Um, let's move that there. So there's my display card. It's going to plop him into any old slot. Uh, what else do I need? I want a speaker so I can hear it. So I've got my speaker here. And this is in a really ratty, ratty um, condition, but I hope it still works. I hope it still makes some noise. Connect up my speaker. Um, you know what I didn't do? I didn't check all these caps. I'm doing that now. Just to make sure the polarities are all right. I know he's got the right size caps on there, but... Okay, it's all looking good. Now this won't boot um, to my SCSI to SD unless I terminate this internal SCSI bus. Um, oh, I need a power supply. Oh, got it. That bloody thing just fell down and hit the roof while, right when I'm holding metal things. It just does it to me. Freaks me out. Um, so shall we at least just, before I even connect up the screen, so we just see if it chimes? Because if it doesn't chime, there's not much point in connecting up the screen. Power. Got me some power. Okay. We ready? We ready. We're ready. Uh, uh, I didn't actually check those traces coming out of the power button. They do sometimes fail too. They could be stuffed, but didn't switch on. Um, let's just try it with the keyboard. Because you never know. You never know your luck. Come on. I'm standing on it. in there. Oh, God. 
God, this cable is in a bad condition. I think it's because I might have stepped on it. <laughs> it's my prerogative. I'll step on it if I want. Far out. Okay, it's in. So let's just try the power button on the keyboard. You know, I don't even know if there's power coming out of this, but we'll assume there is. I know the power supply works because I have tested it before. Right, so we're getting nothing for that. So what I'm going to try now is I'm going to try my forceful power supply. There could well be more trace, trace um, damage here. I do need to you know, continue to look a little bit more. There are lots of things that I can do to diagnose. I'm obviously not going to do them today. I'll potentially do that in another stream. Uh, but what I can at least do is I can use my power supply, which uh, just forces the computer to start up without the startup circuit. Okay. That's this one. I have lots of different power supplies for testing different things. I have a power supply that works on, say, you know, Mac 2s. I've got ones that work on, um, uh, what do you call those things? Uh, 840AVs and 8100s and 8500s and stuff like that. So this is my power supply that says, hey, Mac 2, start up. Don't care whether you've got a battery installed or not. Just start up. Uh, which way around? That way. Okay. Oh, geez, that's uh, fluff. When I originally made this cable, I uh, okay. Well, we got the sound of it of it getting power, but we did not get a chime. Uh, when I originally made this cable, I did it with the wrong crimping tool, so these things continually fall apart. So we're not actually firing up at the moment, uh, which is a shame because I would like to just keep going on this, but I unfortunately, as I mentioned before, don't have the time to do that right now. I'm going to have to duck off and then come back to this later on, uh, potentially on another stream where I might just do it. No chime. So... So sorry about that, folks. Another disappointing end to a live stream without satisfaction. It's terrible. It's mean, and I know I shouldn't do it. Um, but uh, I will be looking over this uh, a little more closely and seeing if there are any more damaged traces. I have pretty, I've got a pretty good feeling about this one. I think we'll be able to get this one up and running, um, but just not in this stream. And when you consider that I've now been going for. 11, 12, 11, nearly three hours. Uh, I think that's uh, that's fair enough. So um, thank you everyone for watching. What are we doing here? We're sitting on around about 42 people. So thank you very much for uh, watching. And of course, the other thing I have to do with this is clean it. It could well just be um, leftover electrolyte causing problems because that can always do that on these old computers as well. So as I say, thank you to everyone for watching. I do appreciate you joining me today. Um, and... Uh, I am sorry that I wasn't able to get this up and running, but I will uh, I will continue with this and I will either do it as a uh, another live stream or I will <coughs> post updates on my um, on my uh, Brankers Facebook page. So thanks again and I uh, I will be streaming again in the not too distant future and I hope to see you there. So I'll take my glasses off for this. Thank you and goodbye.